The largest football crowd in the history of the Lone Star State. 85,000 expected. This is the 106th meeting between these two great rivals, Texas and Texas A&M in College Station. But none has been filled with so much emotion. None has carried such a cloud with the tragic events of the last week so fresh in the minds of everybody here. It's been a nightmare which started eight days ago. This is World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. Good evening. They were getting ready for the big annual bonfire at Texas A&M. They build and burn a mammoth bonfire every year for the game against the University of Texas. Tonight, they are still picking an enormous pile of logs apart in the hope that maybe a student under there is still alive. I had an early morning phone call uh, woke me up and told me there had been an accident. And at that time, the details were sketchy, but we, we knew it was bad uh, early on. There was an urgent need to try to remove some of the logs to... Uh, remove some of the, the victims and the players uh, some of them heard about it by word of mouth and immediately spontaneously went to the bonfire site to help immediately everybody pulled together Monday night 20 busloads of A&M faithful made the 105 mile trip to Austin Aggies and Longhorns lit candles and joined hands and rivals in the Lone Star State were one brought together by those 12 killed and 27 injured Last night at the polo field, Aggies lit the sky, not with the traditional bonfire, but with candles to mourn the deaths and celebrate the lives of those lost. And in the stadium, 60,000 came together to show their support for the team, to illustrate the pulse of Aggie land, and come together to vent, to purge, and to show their emotion. The spirit of the Aggies, past and present, was felt, and head coach R.C. Slocum put the week in perspective. The most fitting tribute that we could give them would be to have a great game with great spirit and great enthusiasm and a great display of what Texas A&M University is all about, and that is the bond of the students to each other. This was the scene just moments ago. You have given us. We thank you for the love and support that has given, been given to the Aggie family. We thank you for the family, friends, and loved ones that have been able to safely assemble here today. Thank you for the relationships that have forever been changed. We ask you to watch over us today and to bring strength to our fellow Aggies still not safely out of harm's way. Please ensure the events of the past eight days are forever imprinted on the hearts and minds of all so that we all remember the importance of our fellow man. Please join me now for a moment of silence so that we can each personally reflect on the events of the past week. A game day at Kyle Field is unmatched in college football. Today, their compassion, their respect, and their sensitivity illustrates the class of those who made up this fine institution. The field today, and he is with the president of Texas A&M, Dr. Ray Bowen. Thanks, Tim. Dr. Bowen, can you summarize the last eight days here at Texas A&M? Well, it's been a disaster of really unspeakable proportion. We've lost 12 of our young men and women and injured on the bonfire, fatalities. And 27 of our young people were injured. Fortunately, 25 of them are with their families now. They're out of the hospital. We have two still in the hospital, and we're all remembering them in our prayers along with the families of all the other students that were injured and the ones that we lost. From all of us at ABC and all those fans across the country, let me pass along our condolences to you, this university, and especially to those families who lost loved ones. I think one thing that has rang true is from all the families this week we've noticed that if those 12 could be here today, they would say, let the bonfire burn, let life go on, and let the game begin. And the game will begin shortly. We're going to take a pause. Thanks for joining us, Dr. Bowen. We're going to take a pause and come back live to College Station, Texas. It's Texas against Texas A&M, live on ABC Sports. Almost every year of this great rivalry, at least one of these two teams is ranked, and oftentimes both clubs are ranked. Texas comes in with a record of 9-2, and two, ranked number 6 in the country, Texas A&M, 7-3, and, and ranked 20th. 
And hello again, everybody. I'm Tim Brandt, along with Dean Blevins. Glad to have you along. And, Dean, I understand that there is a story developing as we speak. That's right, Tim. It, it's as, as if we needed more drama to this game. A major, literally, story developing. Major Applewhite, the expected Big 12 Offensive Player of the Year out of Texas. The quarterback will not start this game. It's unknown how much he will play. He's come down with a stomach virus. He's been pumped full, full of fluids. And so what that does is it gives way to the much ballyhooed true freshman Chris Sims, his first test. Here's a guy who was a lefty. He's the son of Phil Sims, the former NFL star, the number one player in America recruited last year. He was excited and confident in the locker room a few minutes ago. The big things I have to ask, though, are the questions have been one for him so far is, where you gonna, are you going to transfer? When are you going to transfer? Well, the second question now is, are you ready to play? And we'll have the answer to that later in the ball game. Let's go back down to the field and Chip Tarkington. Well, guys, the Texas A&M sideline is like caged lions. They are ready to go. There is so much emotion. And all of a sudden here, this big crowd of 85,000 is ready to play football. I think this will be a great diversion as to what's taking place. Let's go back upstairs. Texas A&M has won the toss. And the Aggies deferred. So Texas will receive the opening kickoff. There's a look at Shane Leckler. He'll be kicking off for Texas A&M. Victor Ike and Hodges Mitchell are deep for the Longhorns, and we're underway. It's Mitchell who watches it go through the end zone for a touchback. So they'll bring it out to the 20, and that's where we'll start. It is electric at Kyle Field this afternoon, as one would expect. And there's a look at number eight, Chris Sims, the young freshman who will get his first start here today. Major Applewhite, as Dean Blevin said, is sick to the stomach and not 100%. So Chris Sims, the true freshman, 6'5", 210-pounder, and the son of the great Phil Sims is now your quarterback for the Longhorns. First down, first pass. It's complete and a gain of two. Take a look at the Chili's starting lineups. For the offense, a big offensive line, and it is the biggest in team's history. As a matter of fact, Leonard Davis is the biggest offensive lineman in the country. 6'6", 367 pounds. Davis and Reisler combined are 12 feet 11 inches tall, 682 <laughs> pounds. The skilled people, Cavell, he's a good one. Nunez and Jones. In the backfield, it is Sims, who starts along with Hodges Mitchell and Ricky Brown. Second down, and call it nine. The first run, a gain of two, and that's Mitchell. Met there quickly by Edwards, Bernard, and Anthony. Take a look at that Aggies defense. Up front, there is Bernard, Edwards, and Flemings. Each one had a hand on Mitchell on that play. The linebackers are good. Glenn, Anthony, Gamble, and Bradley. They're active, they'll move, they'll bring them, they'll stunt. Webster, Jamison. Jennings and Cedric Curry is your secondary and they may be tested here third down they need seven look at the top of your screen underneath they come wide open field it's Thompson he's loose across midfield Thompson to the 30 Thompson to the 20 and finally stop there <laughs> A gain of 67. And that's why we said look at the top of your screen because Texas got the matchup it wanted. One-on-one -on -one up top, Chris Sims, an easy throw, which you want your young quarterback to get started with, and Texas A&M in avoided area. And they are exploited here early. Reminiscent of the way Texas started earlier against Oklahoma, but... Chris Sims, they want to give him some high percentage throws. Well, if success builds confidence, he's had that early success. Sims almost picked off high and behind the receiver. It was intended for Nunez. A&M expected to have pressure on the quarterback, regardless of who it was, thinking Major Applewhite would be the guy, but particularly with the young guy here. Now, the scouting report on Chris, big arm, strong, pretty accurate. 
football mature coming from that family. Obviously, the weakness is inexperience. So he is a great kid. Today we'll find out if he's ready to be a great football right football player right now. There's a look at the major. Cavill at the top of your screen. Flowers at the bottom. Hodges straight ahead. And Hodges down to the 15. Michael Jamis in the safety along with Chad Franzen made the tackle. Hodges Mitchell has become an outstanding running back. He has really improved because when he changes lanes, if you will, he only changes one lane at a time. It's like driving a car and whipping over three lanes. He used to try to do that. Right now, though, he has learned to channel it and only move one lane at a time. Third down and five. Sims changing the play. Aggie showing blitz. Five-step drop. Pressure comes. Throw into the corner. Incomplete. It was intended for Kwame Cavill. Good coverage by Curry. No flags. And this is exactly what Texas wanted again. Kwame Cavill matched up one-on-one, -on -one and we'll see the pressure coming from AM. Good blitz protection. Sims holds it as long as he can hammered and then he gets good coverage on the other end from Cedric Curry 18 does a nice job on one of the best possession type receivers Kwame Cavill in America so a 32 yard field goal attempt by Chris Stockton and he's a good one he's at 20 it's of his gone. 28 it's gone. strong leg and it hit the post place is electric you know Tim I don't think either of us knew what to expect coming in here because we, no one's ever been in a situation like this it has been somber but you're right it is electric now and I think that whichever team handles the emotion wins this game and I'll get back to more of that in a moment it's a good point because emotion sometimes gets in the way of concentration Absolutely. first down Texas A&M Randy McCown is your quarterback Big backs, Coombs and Hardiman behind him. Straight ahead, a loss of one. Met by the entire front of Texas. Take a look at the Chili starting lineup for Texas A&M offensively. A big offensive line, not as big as Texas, but talented. Mahan, Valletta, McKinney, Imuli, and Vincent. The wide receivers, Chris Cole, Chris Taylor, and Broughton is your tight end. They also will play Hodge and Bumgarner, and they'll spread the field. McCown, we told you, is the quarterback. Bernard and Toombs in the backfield now. Hardiman will be there as well throughout the day. Second down and 11. McCown. Looking deep. Incomplete. It was intended for Bumgardner. Defensively for Texas, and this is a very talented defense led by defensive coordinator Carl Reese his defensive front is Humphrey Hampton Rogers and Woodard Casey Hampton and Sean Rogers are as good as you get in college football the linebackers our own Jones DeAndre Lewis Everett Rawls and in the secondary Brooks Jackson Brown and Ervis Hill from Texas City Texas third down and 11 McCown rolls that way, gets a block, there's a flag down, it's complete for the first. Leroy Hodge made the catch, but they'll bring this one back. It's against the Aggies for holding. Tim, back to the point on emotions during this brief break here. Whichever team handles the emotion wins, I think, and it's sort of like a big boxing match. AM is going to come out. They're going to answer the bell with a flurry of emotions like maybe you've never seen before. It's vital that they win the early rounds of this fight to feed off of that emotion because if they don't win those early rounds, it's like a fighter. You know, if you don't win those early ones and you come out with the emotions, sometimes it backfires on you. And Texas's philosophy is to hang on early. Holding on the offense. On a pass play, 10 yards from the previous spot, still third down. 
And Tim, finishing the thought, Mac Brown's philosophy is, he told his club, guys, let's hang on during that little flurry to begin the game. We'll settle into our fight plan, our game plan, and we think we're better than them and we'll win. That's before we learn of, of course, Major Applewhite's stomach virus and that he's out of the game. So we have a totally new element in the game. So they move him back 10 more, Dino. It'll be third down and 21. Wipes away a first down. Big, big penalty. And moves a and dangerously deep in their own territory inside the 10. Play action. Looking deep. Has a man. Is the catch made? Yes. Chris Cole with a terrific catch and a first down for the Aggies. 31 yards. A lot of this now in college football, outside receiver up top, locked in man-to-man -man coverage is Ahmad Brooks. And watch the reception, a one-handed spectacular grab as Cole is the go-to receiver for Texas A&M, and that is why. So they pick up 31. They move it out to the 40. First down, Aggies. <laughs> His feet and into Texas territory. Toombs is six feet, 265 pounds, and when he gets rolling, look out, a gain of 14. You know, that big backfield you spoke of earlier, it's, it's real simple in this game. Texas A&M wants to pound Texas and run just like that early in the game. Texas says, no, you're running into our strength. We think Casey Hampton, Sean Rogers, and the guys can stop you. That's where this game is going to be won or lost. Here they go again. This right time the heart of it. Yeah. And they do stop him this time. All righty, Randy McCowan goes again for Texas A&M. And here's a guy, you look at his strengths. I think the fact that he is a leader and he leads with passion. He plays that way. And he's a good thrower, especially on the out route and the deep ball. Doesn't have a particularly strong arm, but those are his strengths in throwing the ball. He really, as a weakness, shoulders too much of the load, sometimes presses, and therefore makes too many mistakes. And he'll have to minimize those today. Bethel Johnson comes in along with Chris Taylor. They are your set there, your wide receivers at the bottom of the screen, and they are quick. Again, here goes Toons. Hampton is probably one of the strongest and best defensive linemen to ever play at the University of Texas. Watch 64 go. He's 6'1", 305, and he is a bull. And Texas A&M wants to run the football right there, but Tim, I tell you what, you look at the tandem of Hampton and Rodgers, and then you throw Woodard in there sometime to spell them. That is a lot of beef and a lot of talent. Hampton just defeated the double team and made the tackle and showed you everything you ever need to know about him. Third down and seven. McCowan throws off balance. Almost picked off. Now a flag comes in late. But Everick Rawls was almost gone. Number two had the pick and let it go through his hands. And this is against the Aggies. Everett Rawls had a chance because that call goes against Texas A&M. Had he made the interception, there's no one between him and the goal line, so that's six points. I don't see Slocum a little upset with that first call. What would they call illegal formation? Everett Rawls, too, comes out from his line. receiver downfield, declined, fourth down. Ineligible receiver downfield. Don't see it in that picture I at all. I didn't see it either. I didn't see it on our other replay angle, but that's a good look as the referee was speaking there of, of what Everett Rawls as a linebacker did to that flat, that arrow type route. He jumped it, could have had six. McCowan and the Aggies are lucky. Well, the ball is at the Texas 43. If I'm on defense, I'm looking for a fake punt. Meanwhile, All-American Shane Leckler comes in to punt. If he does punt it, to look for the corner. I think it's a game of field position, though, and Leckler can jam him deep as well as anyone. Well, he does Gone. look for the corner. Let's see if he gets there. Well, it goes into the end zone for a touchback. So a 43-yard punt, but they'll bring it out to the 20. They don't gain much by that. We'll be back.
A look at Mac Brown and what a job he's done at Texas. Just concluding his second full year at Texas, and the Longhorns are a power again. Nine and three last year, Cotton Bowl champions. Nine and two now, sixth in the nation, with a very young football team and two great recruiting classes. One of those recruits is quarterbacking the Horns right now. Bill Sims' son, Chris Sims, who was two of four, 58 yards on that first drive. First down, Texas. Broken play, Sims in trouble as the agile goes down at the 11. Let's take you down to Chip Tarkington. Jim, let's give you an update on Major Applewhite. He is still experiencing extreme pain in his stomach. He was sick this morning. Texas has decided they're only going to use him in case of an emergency, so they don't expect him to play unless they absolutely have to have him in the football game. One of the things that Texas misses with Major Applewhite is the leadership, the execution, and we just saw on that last play, a relatively simple handoff not executed and putting Texas in a terrible position. A loss of eight, second down and 18. The give straight ahead to Mitchell. He loses another one. Oh, my, did Cornelius Anthony get there in a hurry? Big old 46 looked like he was shot out of a cannon. Well, 46 hasn't played as well as A&M had hoped this year. Anthony is... Been a solid player since he's been at Texas A&M. He's coming off now as they'll go into a, a nickel or a dime sit situation as Anthony comes off his block. Terrific play there. And this is that flurry we were talking about early in the game that the Texas A&M is playing with. They need to get points here early in the game and take the lead. Thompson, Cavill, and Flowers, three wideouts. Third down and 20. To the outside they go. And Cavill is taken down at the 18. Nice, safe play call by Greg Davis of Texas. He wants to get out of his end zone to punt. He knows this is probably not going for a big play, but it's a high percentage throw to help his quarterback. And Kwame Cavill can get up the sideline, make positive yards. Texas believes this is more a game of field position than any game they've played all year because of Leckler's outstanding ability to punt the football. Well, after an early drive by Texas, the tide has turned. Ryan Long to punt. Jason Webster and Chris Taylor are back at the 35. This is Taylor. Gets a block. Back up near midfield. And there are a couple of flags down by the 40. A 44-yard punt. We'll wait to see what the flag is before we give you the return. Well, the flag will be the old halo rule that our viewers have become very accustomed to seeing. So it'll be against Texas. It'll be against Texas. And the defender cannot get within a two-yard area. That's close right there. It's a six-foot area, and it's very difficult for Jamel Thompson there, the wide receiver on that play, to see, to know exactly when the ball is coming from the receiver. It, it, it's harder done than it is sitting in your living room. We initially... There you go. Halo violation. The kicking team was pushed into the receiving team's area. Therefore, the flag will be waved off. Right, we great call. No violation. Tom Eiler is your referee. Great field position for Texas A&M when we come back. Seven fifty-six to play first quarter. The young guy Chris Sims getting an early indoctrination here in the rivalry between Texas and Texas A&M. What a way to begin your career, really. He's played some this year. Had a lot of snaps against the Texas Tech in the last game, but this is this is for real. Texas A&M has first down up near midfield. Here's Toombs. And Jamar Toombs is hit by DeAndre Lewis. They'll mark it at the 50. Texas A&M believes coming into this game, and I agree in, in terms of their solutions to this game. They've got to sustain the emotion that they started the game with. And then they have to be two-dimensional. This is not the old Texas A&M team that many of you might have seen that used to run it all the time. They now throw the ball, but they also have to be able to run it as Texas will try to penetrate, stop the run early, and then the corners will be locked in man on some risky deep balls as well. And those are Dean's Dell game solutions. Second down, Aggies. Option, late pitch. Tunes around the corner, and Tunes fights his way to the 45-yard line. Again, DeAndre Lewis. Helped out by Greg Brown to get the big guy down. But Toombs is a load, six feet, 265 pounds of running back. 
not Dante Hall. He was booted off the team, and he was a little fast guy. This is a 265-pounder. Good execution by McCown. And when you're big, you better run through tackles, and he gets yards that the little guys don't with power. So again, A&M has great field position, but forced to face a third down and five. Taylor, Hodge, and Johnson are your wideouts. They need five. McCown on the corner. He's got company, and he's not going to make it. Great pursuit by the Longhorns. Casey Hampton, the 6'1", 305-pounder, chased him all the way across the field. Carl Reese has done a terrific job with this defense. They were 104th in the country when he came in a couple of years ago, and now they're sixth statistically. But this is the big decision here for Texas A&M. Fourth down and one. It's your rival. I'd go for it. Ah, uh, with the with the crowd. With the I mean, this this is a risky call because this is what we talked about earlier. If you don't sustain it, have success early, it could backfire. I agree completely. This crowd wants to get into the game. And you have good field position. Hardeman and Tombs, the big guys in the backfield. Straight ahead, no fair dodging. Bingo. <laughs> First down and more. Hey, Coach, that's not dodging right there. Tiki Hardeman. That's coming right down the pike. A gain of 11. Now, I say right down the pike. They didn't go over Hampton and Rodgers, the big two bulls, lining up at defensive tackle for Texas, but took it a little bit outside and a terrific blocking job by Vincent. Big play there. A&M new coming in. They had to control the two inside guys defensively. Said it was critical for the offense to succeed. Here they are again. Toons taken down from behind. Yesterday I had a chance to sit down with head coach R.C. Slocum and I asked him about these two gigantic running backs. We've got two big physical backs, and those guys uh, have, have a way of wearing people down. I think if you're committed to, to running them uh, as a the game goes on, it gets tiring tackling big backs. So you have to play a blocker, get off a block, make a tackle. And early in the game, you can used to do that pretty well. But as the game goes on, uh, normally you see a little bit of a tiring effect. Like a hammer and chisel. Here's the pass to Cole. Cole's loose. Cole to the 10, inside the 5. Great Cole looked like Houdini. Well, it was a great job of game planning. Also, Steve Krakdorf, the offensive coordinator, felt that they needed misdirection. They bring back Cole underneath Greg Brown, the safety, beaten early on the play, and Urbis Hill misses the tackle. But, Tim, they took advantage of the over-pursuit from Texas. Texas is a very aggressive defense, and they were able to take advantage of it there. A gain of 25. First and goal at the seventh. The hammer and chisel lined up behind McNown. Here he is, Toons to the five, to the four. Over, over. I don't care how big and talented you are, Dino. You've got a guy coming in that's 245, blocking for a guy that's 265 and running. That'll wear you down. Well, that's a load. That's a load, and they're running into some beef because with Hampton and Rodgers, you have 305, 315, so that's 620. That's a lot of flesh, partner. I bet they're coming at him again. Second down and goal inside the five. Tunes. He's close. Touchdown, Texas A&M. The whole stadium is rocking. And it was power football. It was power football on the fourth down call when they decide to go for it. And here's a look at power football with number 20. Watch the fullback do his job. DeAndre Hardeman bumps his man aside, and then you have a big old hoss in tombs barreling into the end zone. This crowd letting out some emotion that it has had pent up. Bad snap went right through the hands of the holder. Leckler tries to throw it. It could be a return. Here comes the return, and this will be a score for Texas. There's no way he's got two blockers. 
No penalties. Returned all the way by Lee Jackson, and that'll go on the board for Texas. Not a very wise play by Shane Leckler to try to throw it, and he threw it into the teeth of the Longhorn defense. Well, Shane Leckler was a high school quarterback and a good thrower and probably the best passing punter in the country. Two points for Texas, and watch Jackson. Give him credit. He got the pick. He knew the rule, and he took it the distance. So with 3.49 to play in this return by Jackson, it's 6-2 A&M. How do you measure success? Presenting iChoice from Morgan Stanley Dean Witter, a dynamic new financial program that lets you achieve your success your way. How do you measure success? At Morgan Stanley Dean Witter, we measure success one investor at a time. A pile of 100-year-old bricks might look like rubble to some, but I knew what they'd been through. Knew that you could hardly hurt them. that bricks with a history like that was strong enough to stand again. Ford F-Series Super Duty. Built Ford tough. We're on the road to number one. America's biggest road show. National championship on ABC. The note you shoot the ball on ABC. Yeah! Woo! We're on the road to the Nokia Sugar Bowl! And nothing's gonna stop us! <laughs> Look out! <laughs> Now what? There's an easier way to the national championship. Nokia's road to number one sweepstakes. Just buy any Nokia model phone in a specially marked box and you can win trips to the Nokia Sugar Bowl or thousands of other great prizes. Looks like you finally found yourself a date for the game. Nokia. Connecting people. Texas A&M giving up two points here. The snap is not perfect from Pierce, but it goes through the hands of Mark Ferris, a backup quarterback, putting Leckler in the jam. And you were right, Tim, bad decision there. Although he is a throwing punter and kicker, bad decision, no penalties, and Texas swings the momentum back its way. So A&M will kick off at Shane Leckler, the kicker, to Ike and Mitchell. This will be Mitchell a yard deep, and they'll bring it out. to the 20. ABC Sports presentation of college football is brought to you by Ford F-Series. The best-selling trucks are built Ford Tough. By Burger King, have it your way. By Dell Computer, pioneering direct internet ideas for your business. Be direct, Dell. And by Morgan Stanley Dean Witter. We measure success one investor at a time. Tim Brandt, Dean Blevins, Chip Tarkin did with you at Kyle Field in College Station, Texas. 3.39 remaining in the first quarter. It's Texas A&M 6, Texas 2. Major Applewhite with a stomach virus did not start. Instead, the true freshman, young Chris Sims, is at the helm for the Longhorns. Three-step drop. He's got company. Now he throws, and it's complete to DeVille, just a yard short of the first. Well, that's a terrific job by a true freshman. Sims bought time that time, and a lot of people have told me that he's more like Boomer Esiason, a guy you know pretty well. He reminds me of Boomer. Yeah, instead of his father. But watch him here buy time, buys time, and he's a lefty like Boomer and a blonde, but he buys time until he gets Kwame Cavill open and makes the toss. That's a, that's a play of a veteran. I think Boomer's a little more agile than Chris is right now. And Richard. Right now, yeah, they may check them in about 10 years. I agree with that. <laughs> Whistles fly, flag comes late. They stop the play. Dead ball, ball start, prior to the snap, and the offense. Five yards, repeat the down. 
So that'll move him back five more yards. Tomorrow, Spain's El Nino. Sergio Garcia competes in his first Skins game. He's joined by Marco Mira, Freddie Couples, David Duvall, and one of America's favorite Thanksgiving Day traditions, the Skins game. It's a feast on the green for the green. Thanksgiving weekend, that's tomorrow, 4.30 Eastern, 1.30 Pacific, right here on ABC Sports. Garcia's fun to watch, any partner? No, oh, absolutely. Second down and six. Ball's loose. Is it an incompletion or a fumble? That's an incompletion. That's clearly an incompletion. Should be an incompletion. The official on the play, the linesman, did not make a call. Now they'll say incomplete. Dean, take a look at the Dell game solutions. Well, for Texas, they expect long drives today. They don't think they're going to be having any short fields because Leckler is such an outstanding hunter. So 70 yards or more. Protect the football, particularly now with Sims in there. And Texas A&M defensively do just what they do. Tackle better than they have been and swarm the football. And they will pressure Sims more than they would have Applewhite. Third down and six. Out of the shotgun, Sims rolls. And he runs. He's got the first. Still on his feet to the 45. They'll mark it at the 47-yard line. Chris Sims, acting like a veteran, picks up 23 yards. Well, decision-making is the most important thing from the quarterback position. He rolls this way. He's a right. He's a left-hander, rolls right. That's a difficult position for him. He's looking for Flowers downfield, but Flowers gives him ultimately the block he needs. That's terrific decision-making and running ability. 23 yards for Sims. Texas with outstanding field position. At the 47. First audible that I've noticed from Sims. And the crowd picks up trying to block it. Mitchell. A loss of one. You know, Matt Brown told his team yesterday, Tim, when we were out on the practice field with them during the walkthrough here, he said, now this crowd is going to be into it like you've never seen. He said, if they get to you, just don't let the crowd know that they've gotten to you. Thought it was a good point. Terrific play there by number 30, Brandon Jennings on a safety blitz. So it'll bring up second down and 11 for Matt Brown and his Longhorns. This place is really loud this afternoon. Bottom of your screen, they like to go to Montreal Flowers in this, in this set. And again, they blow the play dead. And it looks like it'll be against a and Timeout, Texas. Correction, timeout, Texas. Two minutes, five seconds remain in the first quarter. We're still at 6-2 A&M. Faster, more reliable, higher quality, more profitable. Nortel Networks is building the new high-performance internet, and it can be whatever you want it to be. So tell us. What do you want the internet to be? Come together right now over me. This is a rental car. It's just a car, not even your car. So what's the big difference when you're choosing? Price. You search, get the rates, and what you're really looking for is a great car at a low rate. That's thrifty. Just the things you'd expect from a worldwide car rental company. Things like great cars, great service, airline miles, Blue Chip Express program, the works, and at a low rate. So the next time you need a rental car, call Thrifty. Just what you want, just Thrifty. There can be only one priority. At Morgan Stanley Dean Witter, we have never forgotten ours. Not surprisingly, we measure success a little differently. 
This game today is like a healing salve or a bomb for these people, forcing them to move on to the tragic events of this past week. And I mean, they are letting it all out here today. Second down and 11 for the Longhorns. Again, the quick toss, intercepted. Brian Gamble inside the 45 with the interception and Texas A&M has great field position. Texas got what it wanted on the alignment. They go backside to Montrell Flowers. The pass, I think, Tim, is, has a little too much steam on it. Now, that's a good problem. You want a kid with a strong arm. Watch how quickly this ball gets on a slant route to Montrell Flowers. But he's got to catch that. And that'll be an interception in the books for Chris Sims that doesn't belong to him. Well, Brian Gamble is also a freshman. He's young, but he's talented and awfully solid. First down, Aggies. Bethel Johnson in motion, and he's a speed back. Look out. That'll count as a sack. Great pressure by DeAndre Lewis, number four. Reminder coming up next on ABC College Football Doubleheader continues. Eric Crouch in number three, Nebraska. They need a win to clinch a spot in the Big 12 championship game against Texas. They keep their national championship hopes alive. They take on Colorado. That's coming up next right here on the home of the Bowl Championship Series, ABC Sports. Montrell had a chance there. Let it go through his hands. Here's Toombs. It's a tough two yards. Stopped by Cedric Woodard and Aaron Humphrey. You know, the defensive front for Texas has played very, very well. Look at those numbers. 20 and a half sacks so far. Tackles for losses, 63, and that is a really good front four. We've talked a lot about Casey Hampton and Sean Rogers. Mentioned Woodard. Well, Aaron Humphrey, number 49, is a, an outstanding senior defensive end. Plays as hard as any player Mack Brown has ever had. Third down in a taxi ride. They need 19 to move the chains. McCown has a lot of pressure. Ball's loose. Texas has it. It's Longhorn football. DeAndre Lewis forced the fumble. And it was recovered by Humphrey. Turnover given, turnover taken. McCown here makes a mistake that he just can't make. As the, the leader of this offense, you've got to secure the ball. That wasn't hit with the helmet. That wasn't jarred out with a severe hit. That was a sloppy job of not protecting the football. He granted he's under pressure, but he's not throwing on schedule. No, he's not. He, he, had, he had Bethel Johnson wide open on the play before that and never pulled the trigger. He's got to get back. If it's five steps, take your five steps, take a hitch, and throw it. That Final. comes back to Tim just trusting yourself and trusting your teammates. Final 25 seconds of the first quarter in what has been a wild first quarter here in College Station. A&M showing the blitz. Ball's loose again. There's a flag down. A&M says they have it. But were they a, flag. Yeah, were they across the line of scrimmage? This is a critical call. Well, I don't know. Anthony got there so quickly. A&M or Texas... Got the uh, fumble. We have no flag on the play. The flag was inadvertently thrown instead of the beanbag on the fumble. No flag. Well, then the fumble had to have gone to Texas. Let's see as Sims has nowhere to go. Ball's on the ground, so Texas recovered. We assume. Sloppy play, though, by Phil Sims as well. You've got to protect the football in all games, particularly one like this with the emotions Riding so high every turnover. Second down and 15. Sims wide open. And Cavell has his fourth catch of the afternoon, and there's another flag. But Kwame Cavill is out to a quick start. He has his fourth catch. He is a combo of agility and power. Came to Texas as a linebacker and a safety. I didn't see what the penalty would have been as we've watched an ISOM. It's holding against AM. and m Yeah, I, I, I didn't see a Texas mistake in the secondary, so that had to have been what it was. And so the catch will stand. Cavill now with 89 catches 
for the year. I guess you'd say he's the go-to guy. Uh, he's a terrific player. He is, uh, he is a very aggressive receiver. He was recruited as a uh, linebacker, as a safety. And uh, really strong hands. <laughs> Talking to him before the game, he says, I like to look at my defender in the eye. He says, I know by looking at them what they're thinking if they're, if they're psyched out. Bowling by the defense on an eligible receiver. Ten yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. The end of the first quarter is here at hand, and with the penalty, they will have the final play. It has been a wild first quarter in College Station. I think each team has to be pleased. They don't like the turnovers, but Texas A&M had to take advantage of the emotion and, and, and take a lead and get the crowd into the game, keep the crowd into the game. They've done that. Texas, as we said, wanted to hang in there. Hang on, let the game take shape, sustain itself, and then settle into the game. And I think that's where we are now. So the big question becomes, can A&M ride that emotion? Texas with a record of 9-2. Texas A&M at 7-3 and three. And with that win over Texas Tech. The Longhorns secured at least a share, or they did win the Big 12 South Division title. They'll play Nebraska or Colorado early. Final play of the first quarter. Mitchell inside the 30. Inside the 25 to the 21-yard line. The big gain of 11. The big game coming up is critical. Kansas State or Nebraska will play them. 6-2 A&M. ABC Sports presentation of college football will return after this message and a word from our ABC stations. All set to start the second 15 minutes at College Station, Texas. Toombs with a short run for a touchdown, made it 6 0 Aggies. And then the return of the attempted extra point by Jackson. And the extra point try, two points for Texas. And that's where we are, 6 2. This is Mitchell on the run. He's got room to the 15. Longhorns threatening again. Hodges Mitchell needs to thank the guys up front for that. He makes some holes on his own, but big Leonard Davis and Roger Raisler, the best of the bunch up front, did a terrific job there. Look at Davis. This guy is 6'6", 367, the junior. Raisler's the only senior up there. This is a very young football team. Right now, the AM wrecking crew has to make a stop. The Longhorns have them back. Mitchell. He's got company, breaks the tackle, look out. Mitchell for the touchdown for the Longhorns. Hodges Mitchell with a 14-yard scamper. And oh, is he quick. Hodges Mitchell does a great job here of not dancing, but darting for a reason. When he finds that he can't go to the right, most backs are dead right there. Great vision. Looks back, darts through the hole, and although he's only a 4-5-5 runner, which in football terms means that he's not an especially fast back, he's quick with great explosion. Extra point by Ryan Long is good. And it's 9-6, Texas. Hodges Mitchell. Wow. What's on for today? Boss wants you, me, and Charlie to take the new Silverado and move them bales. Is that Charlie? Chevy Silverado has the most powerful V8 of any 4x4 pickup. Then we gotta water the herd. 300 horses make it more powerful. If there's any daylight left, we'll take Norm up to see the ladies. More powerful than Ford and Dodge. That's why it's the truck. Silverado from Chevy. Well, guess that's enough for today. Faster, more reliable, higher quality, more profitable. Nortown Networks is building the new high-performance internet, and it can be whatever you want it to be. So tell us, 
What do you want the internet to be? Come together right now over me. Parents love the fact that the Burger King Big Kids Meal has more of a great tasting food their kids love. And kids love the fact that they can get a limited edition gold plated Pokemon trading card to trade with their friends. Hey, it took you so long. Which makes every parent happy. Well, most parents. Now, when you buy a tasting value meal, you can get a 23 karat gold plated Pokemon trading card from Pokemon the first movie for just $1.99. Pokemon and Burger King, come and catch them all. This is the best road trip we've ever had. And it gets better with a primetime matchup. Can you drive at night? To see Notre Dame Stanford, you betcha. Well, a short 37-yard drive by Texas after the turnover by McCown. And Chris Sims just orchestrated that nicely. Then the run by Hodges Mitchell. And it's Texas 9, Texas A&M 6. Ryan Long now preparing to kick off for the Longhorns. And Bethel Johnson, number 9, is standing on his own five-yard line for a &M. And he is dangerous. This will be Johnson taking it at the two. No place to run. Flags fly late. Johnson gets it back to the 13-yard line, and that's it. Well, the holding call will push A&M back farther. And, you know, Texas talking to its team yesterday with their coordinators, they felt that they were telling the team that, you know, we think our defense is, is better than their offense. And so we think that they're going to really have trouble going a long distance to score. That type of penalty just jet backs you all the way back. They're back to the seven-yard line. So you're looking at 93 yards if you want to go down and score. That's tough for this offense. So again, A&M backs way, way up. And the Longhorns have the advantage. All of the seven. First down, Aggies. Toons still on his feet to the 15-yard line. And Jamar Toons just punishes tacklers a gain of nine. This is power on power. Linebackers beaten there as Lee Jackson comes up from his strong safety position, and Jackson is 10 yards back, and you don't mind your safeties being involved in a lot of tackles. These days they play close, close to the line of scrimmage, but not when they make them making contact with 10 yards. Again, straight ahead. And Hardeman bangs his way out across the 20. First down, Aggies, they'll move the chains. Take a look at today's Aplac trivia question. It's a pretty good one. Who was the best single game receiving, or who was, or who has the best single game receiving performance in AM history? Good question if you can read it. And it, <laughs> <laughs> and it may have come against Texas. But then again, it may not. First down, Aggies. Toons breaks the tackle, runs over another one, and finally, three guys forcing backwards. Okay, Rawls, roll off, Jackson, and Brown are there with a host of other Texas Longhorns. Texas felt coming in that it needed to penetrate the offensive line. They needed to stop the big guys before they get rolling. Sean Rogers, 73. Watch him in the middle of your screen there. He gets a hand on him, doesn't get him, but he slows him down. Gang tackle, tackles come. It's a good job of execution there for Texas. Excellent game plan. They need seven. This is second down. The big guy straight ahead again. Over, two. Tough two. They continually attack that front. Hampton and Rogers, Humphrey and Woodard. I know Steve Crackthorpe, the offensive coordinator, would love to be throwing the ball more, but you just can't afford the turnovers in the game. You probably are not going to score a lot of points in. Especially after the count looked a little exactly. late on pulling the trigger. Exactly, and they are so intent on getting a running game established to set up the play action. Third down and five. Step drop throws quickly. It'll be close to the first, a yard short. 
Chris Taylor with the catch. They'll mark it at the 29. They had to get to the 30. That was outstanding defense. I think he's short. And deep in their own territory, Mac Brown knows they probably will not go for it here if they're short, which it appears they are. Great stop there by Roderick Babers and Tim. You know, that was the player who yesterday came down with the, the seizures on the team bus coming over to practice. They didn't know if he would be able to play. He's a terrific young true freshman. He made a great play there, and that's not a first down. No, AM cannot go for it here, despite what the crowd is begging them to do. Well, those are the uninformed rooters, the boosters right there, the, the support, but that's not the intelligent things to do. R.C. Slocum's been in this business too long. He's won too many games to go forward in a situation like this. So All-American punter Shane Leckler comes on. Average 44 yards a punt last year. He's a career average of 44 and a half. He's going for the NCAA career record. Garcia standing at the 25 for Texas. There's the best in the country. He is without a doubt the best. And he'll need to boom one here. This is not one of his better ones. This is a line drive that takes an Aggie bounce. It will be returned, and Garcia brings it back to the 34. ABC Sports presentation of college football is brought to you by Chevrolet Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. By Chili's, a proud sponsor of ABC College Football. By Nortel Networks, we're building the new high-performance Internet. And by Sears and the Sears National Championship Trophy. Gorgeous day in College Station, Texas. Clear skies, sunny, temperatures in the mid-60s. First down, Longhorns. Sims, pressure, sacked. Chris Sims sacked for the third time. Brian Gamble, who already has an interception, has his second sack of the year. There was a shot of Major Applewhite, and you know Major Applewhite is really feeling sick, literally. Here's a guy who originally committed to come to Texas A&M, decommitted because Steve Insminger, the offensive coordinator at the time when he committed, was subsequently fired. But he's not playing because he feels horrible. If you, if you can imagine scrambling to the restroom and being very, very sick and then putting a helmet on and coming out and having to function like this, that's what he would have had to do. Sims, play action. Plenty of room on the corner. Throws to the outside. It's complete. Cavill with his fifth catch of the day. He's out close to a first down for the Longhorns. He'll be three yards short. A couple of good plays for Phil Sims. The first was taking the sack. Sometimes taking a sack is the best option. And then here he fluidly comes out in isolation. You see Texas A&M in soft coverage. And just a little skinny out route, a little short out route, executed well. Bill having a big afternoon. The Big 12 leading receiver. It's amazing that Texas would have a receiver with almost 90 receptions. Third down and short. Silver. Going to be close to the first, but Cavill with another catch, and he's down to the 45-yard line. Hey, that's a terrific play by a veteran in Kwame Cavill. He knew exactly how far it was needed to get a first down. Watch Kwame Cavill here. I'd like to show you. The telesprompter is on the fritz here, so we can't use that today. But watch him. He gets bumped, catches it. Watch him dive forward. He knows he needs to get there. He gets it by a foot. But this is Texas. This is These a, are the Longhorns. This is a new day in Texas. <laughs> You've got a guy with almost 90 receptions for the year. 1956, Bob Bryant had 24 receptions. He's been the leader in season receptions ever since until Kwame Cavill. There's a carry by Mitchell. Well, the, the, the times have changed. I remember talking with Mac Brown when he was into about his fourth year at Carolina. He said, to, at North Carolina, he said, you know, we're going to recruit because we're going to recruit well because we're going to play the NFL game. When you get throwers and receivers and offensive linemen want to go to the pros, it worked at North Carolina. He's come here and done the exact same thing, and it's working extremely well. The offense of the next millennium. 
Hodges Mitchell loses his footing, loses two yards. Great turf, though, Tim. I know you were down on it earlier in the week, and this is about as good as it gets. But they did have some rain. Right. And uh, yesterday when we walked on it, when Texas arrived, and we were out there with the Longhorns, it was a little bit soft, a little bit damp, and it's causing some problems today. If you can't have good grass at a school like Texas A&M, you can't have good grass, huh? to play in the first half. It's Texas 9, Texas A&M 6. Third down and 7 for the Horns. Blitz is coming. Makes it complete. cavill has got the catch. First down, Texas. What a play by Chris Sims, the freshman. Oh, what a wonderful play. And half of it was before the play ever started. Brooks had him dead to rights on the blitz and tagged him as he released it. And before that, though, Tim, he recognized the blitz was coming, changed his pass protection, makes a one-handed grab with his off hand, gets belted, makes a perfect strike. That is as good as you can do it. Boy, he took a shot right in the mouth and delivered a strike. First down, Texas. Thompson in motion. Sims with time. And right through the hands of Montel Flowers. Montrell had it, should have made the catch. Montrell is off to a slow start. They love what he's doing for them. I mean, his emergence has really helped out the, the Texas passing attack. When he catches it, he goes a long way. He goes 17 yards every time he catches it, and he's a 10 100 meter sprinter. But you've got to catch it. At a 997 100 meters in high school. He went 997. 997. Yeah. Flowers goes out. Brandon Healy comes in. Second down and 10. Sims now 7 for 12. 100 yards. Hodges Mitchell carries the pile with him to the 40. This is a tough environment to play if you're a veteran, particularly if you're a true freshman. But you realize the noise factor. Texas knew coming in it would be extremely loud and they would be using complicated hand signals. And Chris Sims is mastering that pretty well. And, and the team's taking the leadership. Big stop here for AM. They need it. Crowd comes to its feet. Third down and seven. Out of the shotgun, Sims. Throws another strike to Cavill. And it's a first down for Texas. And it's seven catches now for Kwame Cavill. Well, Cavill says, you know, my, but, my best buddy back there, M Major Applewhite, does a great job, buys time, and finds me in cases like this. He said, freshman, I didn't know you could do that. That's a terrific job. How about this, Steve? Out of his 92 catches this year, 47 of them have been for first downs. Mm. 44% of his yards come after the catch, too, showing his strength. Gain of 16, first down Longhorns. Here's Hodges Mitchell. Look out. Gets a block. Breaks to the outside, inside the 15 to the 13-yard line. Hodges Mitchell. Terrific block by Antoine Kirk Hughes, the Perfect. guard. Perfect example of softening up the belly. The pass opens up the middle. It makes it easier to run. Look at those big horses up front. Just zone blocking and Davis and Raisler giving running room to Hodges Mitchell, who doesn't need much. Texas is picking it up in chunks. That was a gain of 12. This is the 11th play of this drive. Mitchell again. Inside the 10. A vision. AM has been a little bit disappointed defensively with its front line. They have Rocky Bernard and Ron Edwards and Ronald Flemons up front, but these, this is a smallish bunch going against an especially large offensive line with the Longhorns. Timeout on the field. We'll take one as well. 6.33 to play in the half.
Chris Sims with his first completion of 57 yarder to Thompson on the opening drive. His next seven have gone to Kwame Corville, who Tim needs just 17 yards to set the record. Second down for the Longhorns. Deep in Texas A&M territory. Sims to Hodges Mitchell straight ahead inside the five to the two. Terrific block by Derek Dockery, the guard. But right now, Chris Sims acting like a time-tested veteran. And this is the lull. You can almost hear a pin drop in the stadium right now. This is the lull that Texas A&M can't afford. If Texas punches this out, they have to come back and answer the bell, the well, Aggies. Last year, the Aggies could concentrate on Ricky Williams. Now yeah. Texas is a pass-run explosion. There's no one key. They're a three-headed monster with the quarterback. I'll just make Joe Kwame. First down and goal. Thompson in motion. Hodges with the ball. Hodges Mitchell close to the goal line. No signal. They'll mark okay, it roll up, guys. inside the one. Hodges Mitchell is short, 5'7", 190 pounds. And behind those big old linemen, he's a hide-and-seek runner. He hides behind the big guys and seeks a hole and oftentimes finds the crease. Texas A&M needs a stop in the worst way, but really it seems the only way you stop someone the way Texas has been pounding it is a fumble. Right now, Texas A&M needs a miracle. Second down and goal. Straight ahead they go. Touchdown, Texas. Impressive drive by the Longhorns. They did what they wanted. They got the running of Hodges Mitchell. They got the performance from Sims, the quarterback, and they also got Kwame Cavill having a superior day. And those are the headliners. But you know what? The guys up front did just as an outstanding job as the rest of them. Smart play by Texas. They take Mitchell out. They bring in Chris Robertson, and the big guy just bangs over the top. And Chris Robertson with the touchdown, Stockton with the extra point. Every time Robertson touches it, he scores. 11 touchdowns and 7 touches. Texas 16, A&M 6. Balanced attack by the Longhorns, and they've taken a 10-point lead with 5-19 to play in the first half. Stockton booms this one. Johnson all the way back to the back line and downs it there. They'll bring it out to the 20. This is a huge drive for Texas A&M. They're down 10. The crowd is out of the game right now. They really need to make something happen here. And I think, you know, they have to avoid, Tim, what they got into the uh, habit of doing against Nebraska. They got into some must-pass situations, and the Huskers were all over. That's what Carl Reese and the Texas defense would like to do to them. So it's hard to stay with your game plan and run, but you really sort of need to do that to keep them off balance. Well, in that same light, it's too early for a and to panic. They have to be patient, just do what they decided to do with their game plan. That's the big guy running straight ahead up to the 20. And that's the problem. Two. That's the game plan right there. And, you know, you're matching your big guys against their big guys, and Casey Hampton and Sean Rogers are winning more times than not. Well, we saw it earlier in the year, specifically the Nebraska game. When A&M was unable to run, they were paralyzed. Oh, yeah. And lost it 37 to nothing. I'll tell you what, that Nebraska defense is special, though. I mean, I've watched Nebraska defenses for 30 years, and that's as good a defense as I've seen. Second down and 10. Toombs loses yardage. Crowd impatient. And it, it, it really it goes back to what we said just a moment ago. You, you have to just get something going on the ground because if not, Texas will tee off on you and know exactly what's going on. Watch the big guys up front. Sean Rogers, 73. He is a big load, a big-time player. Tim, this guy's 315. He is the most talented player on the field for Texas. He'll be an NFL player. He's been inconsistent and mature, immature in his early years, his early days, but he is a dominant football player when he plays hard. Texas front four is the best in the country, in my opinion, bar none. McCown to throw, does over the middle. Looking for Johnson incomplete. 
Bethel Johnson had a step. It looked like he could make the catch. It sure did. Crowd's wanting a, a penalty. Well, it looked like he was more concerned at getting a flag than getting the football. McCown is a good deep ball thrower, but Bethel Johnson here doesn't adjust on the route. It looks as though the ball is catchable. It's not an easy catch, but he didn't get his head back quickly enough to see where the to see where his adjustment needed to be made. So Shane Leckler comes back on to punt. His last punt was not a great one. Certainly not up to his caliber. And this one's not a great one. This one goes up to midfield and gets an AM bounce down inside the 45. Well, we're talking about great rivalries, and certainly Texas, Texas A&M is that. Tomorrow, interstate rivals go head-to-head -head on ABC. Heisman Trophy candidate Joe Hamilton of the Yellow Jackets take on the Bulldogs of Georgia. Georgia, Georgia Tech, and then followed by Arizona, Arizona State. Running back Trump candidate and the Wildcats take on the Sun Devils. That's tomorrow right here on ABC Sports. It starts at 1 Eastern. 10 Pacific on ABC, the home of the World Championship Series. And if you haven't seen you? Joe Go Hamilton on. play, shame on you. It's as good as they get. Well, just as the last series was huge for the Texas A&M offense, it's even bigger for the A&M defense here. They can't go into halftime trailing by more than what they are now. Texas again with great field position, and Sims looking deep, going for the home run. And it's incomplete, intended for Kwame Cavill, who's having a terrific day here at Kyle Field. That was covered by Jason Webster. You had a look at him there, number 39. He is the best cover man for Texas A&M and a terrific player. This guy's been around for three years as a starter, and he is one of the guys. I think one of the things they've missed this year defensively is not only the play of Datwin, the All-American linebacker, but with the spirit of him, the leadership. And although Jason Webster is a leader, he's a quiet, non-vocal leader. Second down again, the blitz. And this time, Hodges Mitchell is st stopped in his tracks. Don't you think, though, that the loss of Datwin, maybe more than just his superior play, the way he carried himself and leadership, the guts, that that's what this defense has missed more than anything, Tim? Oh, I, I, I agree with you 100%. A&M finishes in the top 10 in total defense more times than not. Last year, the Aggies were 10th in the nation, running blitzes with that win, as you said. A little more difficult now, but Brian Gamble has done a great job filling in. Gamble, number 17, he's got a nice career in front of him, only a redshirt freshman. See what A&M a &M does here. They're in a two deep on third down and 10. Sims rolls around the corner and is tagged as he goes out of bounds, and now a flag comes in late. Jay Brooks was the man that delivered the blow. R.C. Slocum feels he was hit legally, but a flag came in immediately. Well, that's the hardest blow that Sims has seen. Rocked his world for an instant. That was a close call because it appeared that he was out of bounds when he was hit. Flag will be picked up. Flag is picked up, no penalty. As he stepped out. tell you this tough to tell if he was in or out but that is a great lick by Brooks I didn't hear what the official ended up saying I said he was hit he was he out he out. was well he was out of bounds right there he's out of bounds and he comes back in I guess it was the ruling but that defender doesn't know he right. was out of bounds right. five yards earlier right and that's why he picked up the flag So Ryan Long comes on to punt after the wrecking crew has made the stop. Two best calls here in this game have been no calls. This is a high tail wagger. Taylor will field it at the 10 and he'll try to return it. And does to the 15. So a 43-yard punt 
and a five-yard return. Coming up next Saturday, conference championships and automatic BCS bids are on the line. At 3.30 Eastern, the Texas Longhorns, led by Major Applewhite or Chris Sims, against Nebraska or Kansas State. And how about this? Running back Sean Alexander in the number, number nine. Crimson Tide looked to upset the Gators. That's all on ABC, the home of the Bowl Championship Series. Well, in the first quarter, that was deafening in here. It's gotten quiet now. First down for the A&M Aggies. Again, McNown doesn't throw. Inside the five. Throws it up for grabs and out of bounds. That is terrific coverage by the secondary of Texas. He had nowhere to go with that football. Earlier, we gave you the Aflac trivia question. Who has the best single-game receiving performance in A&M history? And the answer is, partner? Uh, it was back in the 60s. Was it McLean? That's it. Kenny McLean from A&M had 250 yards receiving against hey. Texas hey. way back in 1965. Hey. I followed Southwest Conference football. I bet you did. Now, my brother played for the Razorbacks back in that general time of the era. Randy McCown again up behind center and the give is to Hardiman. Nothing's working for the Aggies offensively. They will have to go regroup and try to figure something at halftime, although they'd love to be able to jam in some points here before the gun goes off in two minutes, but they have really struggled. McCown is three for seven. He needs one now. Third down and five. Throws to the corner, bounces it out in the direction of Chris Taylor. McCown, right now, not playing with a great deal of confidence. Makes the play calling tough for that guy, Steve Cragthorpe. Because when plays are there, you have to execute. Now, that's a hard throw. That's across the field. That's an out route, but that's his strongest throw. I think the pressure mounts when things start to go south. And Texas A&M feels that pressure right now. That is four three plays and out for the Aggies. That's not going to get it done. It's gone. Lecter gets a good punt this time. It's a high one. It'll be taken by Garcia. And he's hit almost immediately. Good coverage by A&M. Garcia is downed at the 44-yard line. So a 36-yard punt. No return. Good job by the Aggies, and I was thinking that uh, Texas is a club that started the season so slowly with special teams. You look back in the North Carolina State game, they lost that because, of, what was it, four block punts? And Mac Brown told me a couple of days ago that his club has won the kicking game the past four games. So they had room for improvement and has made it and, and have made it by now. The story of the second quarter has been great field position for Texas. Once again, the Longhorns at the 44. First down, Sims. Late to Cavill. No, incomplete. Reminder coming up, Valvoline Halftime Report. John and Terry in the studio and on-field activities from here at Kyle Field. That's all coming up in about a minute and 38 seconds. Another good throw. Michael Jamison there in coverage was able to swat it away, but Texas A&M is going to sit back in some zone. They're rushing four, dropping seven, so you'll likely see completions. They'd love to put pressure on this kid, though, but he's handled it really well. From the shotgun. The horns need 10. No. Incomplete. Brandon Healy took it on the short hop. And so it'll bring up third down and 10. And the wrecking crew of AM needs a stop here badly to get to the house team just down yeah. 10, yeah. I would think would be a victory. Yeah, and that was a nice job because they only came with four, but it felt like the pressure, meaning four men rushing, their, their ends and their tackles coming through. They ran some tricks up front and were able to get pressure. Let's see if this was a catch. I don't know if he was on the line. It looked as though he caught it before it hit the ground. I don't know. From that angle, it was hard to see if he was inbound. Third down and 10. 
Sims goes down again. Ron Edwards with a sack. Well, Edwards is the best of the guys up front. And he beats Anderson on that play and Raisler and gets to the quarterback. So the defense has responded, Tim, the last two times it's had an opportunity to keep the Aggie offense in position to win this football game. I'll tell you this. Ron Edwards is an all-conference type guy, 6'3", 273, extremely strong, knows how to leverage, used his body to root deep and find the ball like he did that time. Timeout on the field with 116 to play. AM down by 10, but with the football when we come back. One sixteen to play in the first half. Longhorns ready to give it back to the Aggies. This is Ryan Long. A lot of pressure coming, ball blocked. Texas AM makes a block. Michael Jamison, we got there first. And the Aggies have made a big play. And what a time to do it. Shorten that field, turn it around, and watch Jamison, number one, come through. Unblocked. A busted assignment at a terrible time for Texas, and what a wonderful time for Texas A&M, whose offense needed this type of help. <laughs> Talk about an in-your-face play. There it is. Talk about a team that needed a big play and got one. One ten left in the first half. It's over, it's over. Tiki Hardeman to the 30, and the crowd gets restless again. You know what? Great defenses make crowds get restless. People get frustrated with play calling, and sometimes it's just that the other guys do a better job on that particular play. The Aggies pick up the tempo. McCown looks. It was intended for Chris Taylor. But Ahmad Brooks had pretty good position on him, and Taylor couldn't come back across him to make the catch. Well, he's really replaced Chris Cole as the go-to guy. Taylor here is complaining about coverage. I don't think that he had a legitimate complaint. I think Brooks was in good position, and Taylor, when you get, you know, the old rule is when you get your hands on the ball, you got to catch it. That's a tough catch, but you, that's that's a the type of catch that makes big plays and wins games for you. So it's third down and nine. From the shotgun. McCown with a lot of pressure. No. And throws incomplete. Threw it in the direction of Cole, but I think he was throwing that one away just not to take the sack. Well, Carl Reese, the defensive coordinator at Texas, has a philosophy that he's going to come early and stay late. He, uh, I guess uh, they have a call that's double saw, double knife. We're coming early. And that's what they've done in this game, and they've continued to do throughout. They started the game that way, and they're doing it now. And AM, Tim, has simply not been able to exploit Texas when they've had them in some vulnerable positions. Well, the Aggies are going for it on fourth down and nine. Out of the range of Kitchens, the game has been inconsistent field goal-wise, and here's McCown in a lot of trouble. Looking for a block. Throws back across his body, and it's intercepted. And now they rule it off and say it's incomplete. Wow. That's not a good decision. He looked like he had room to run. Well, that's the only thing he could have done because in terms of coverage, Texas was in good shape. Good job by Ahmad Brooks right there on Taylor, and that's the way all the receivers were covered. That's not an interception, which really is to the advantage of Texas because the ball is spotted farther. But that's good defense, Tim. I don't know that he had a lot of room to run because Texas had great closing speed on him. It's been an outstanding performance defensively by the Longhorns and a suspect performance offensively at best for Texas A&M. Well, I know a lot of people here at Kyle Field shaking their heads saying, why didn't Terrence Kitchens come on? As long as field goal is 62 yards, certainly has a strong leg. This would have been from 47. But Kitchens has been very inconsistent as of late. He's 15 of 23 kicking field goals. Well, they've had blocked kicks. I think they've had seven of them blocked. 
And that's really unusual for Texas A&M. That's Ahmad Brooks who's down. And now medical staff has him up and he'll get off the field. Well, they need him out there. He's but the, the best cover corner for Texas by far. Twenty nine seconds left in the half a half that has been pretty much dominated by the Texas Longhorns. I think Texas goes conservatively here especially in that formation they go down and take a knee and say Chris you've done a nice job we've got a 10 point lead we've held off their surge so more of the same in the second half and Texas A&M will be lamenting the fact that they had a chance there at the end of the half to take advantage of the turnover and didn't but still 10 points behind you're definitely in the middle of this ball game. 10 seconds left they'll let that expire and that'll be the end of a very emotional wild first half here at Kyle Field in College Station Texas the final second ticks off let's take you back to New York to John and Terry all right John thank you very much while we were away the Texas Aggie band formed a silent block T there was silence in the stadium as they marched off and you could hear yourself breathe there has been a kaleidoscope of emotions permeating the air in College Station Texas specifically here at Kyle Field this afternoon. Well, we're ready to play football again. The teams are on the field. They've been waiting for us, and we're ready to turn them loose. It's Texas 16, Texas A&M 6, 30 minutes to play here in College Station. You know, this is a state that is filled with passion, and uh, I think we've seen uh, the best of people come out, whether they're Longhorns, Aggies, or, or neither. That reminds me, I live back in Oklahoma City and the tragedy that we endured with the bombing, and you saw just the, the great uh, traits of people come out. Now, there wasn't a dry eye in the house here at halftime. Ethel Johnson takes it five yards deep. He takes a knee, and they'll bring it out to the 20. Take a look at the Dean Witter first half statistics. Well, the numbers that jump out at you there, A&M has not been able to run the ball very well or throw it, 105 total, but their passing yards is only 59. And I think the points off turnovers is a critical thing. Nine points for Texas. It's only listed as one turnover because that's the way it is statistically. But in reality, they had the fumble and the interception on the extra point attempt that was essentially two turnovers costing them nine. Texas A&M starts the way they ended it with a run by Toons off the left side. The Texas A&M first half statistic that jumped out at me was their one for eight on third down conversions. You can't win doing that. And, and the turnover number, there's a statistic in football that is relevant. So many times statistics are not. But there's a statistic that reveals that the team with the fewest turnovers wins the game 80 percent of the time well I'm glad they're back to football I couldn't take much more of that halftime wow it was emotional second down and nine Tunes across the 30 it'll be a first down move the chains the Aggies on the roll right now let's take you downstairs to Chip Tarkington well, thanks, Tim. You know, most of the time when teams come out on the field for the second half, there's a lot of emotion. Texas A&M came out on the field very quietly until they got on the sidelines and got ready for the kickoff. Then all of a sudden, the emotion erupted again. I think they're going to play a much more enthusiastic second half than they did the first half. And as, as Texas came out of the locker room, the Aggie band had formed a silent T, and there was silence. They took a knee, took their helmets off. It was extremely moving. It's over, it's over. Again, they run straight ahead. This time, Tiki Hardeman, who's 5'10", 242 pounds, from Houston, Texas, and he picks up a tough yard. It'll be interesting to see a match of wits going on here because at halftime, of course, adjustments are made, and Steve Cragthorpe, the offensive coordinator for the Aggies, had several adjustments that he needed to make. He's sticking with his running game. Mac Brown believes his defensive coordinator, Carl Reese, is the best in the country and the best in large part because he makes great halftime adjustments. Again with the run, Toombs, oh, as he drilled, as he comes up to the line of scrimmage, Casey Hampton just leveled him. A&M, that's not what you look for in possessions in the first half, except the second possession. They were able to take it, 
and score. But other than that, they had the fumble. And, and actually following the touchdown, they did have that interception that cost them to. Then the fumble, punt, 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 and out on down. So first downs and big plays they have to do. Terrific hit by Hampton. Strongest guy on that Texas team. Bench presses 460 pounds. Squats 600. And the Cowns pass is blocked. This time by Aaron Humphrey, who's 6'3", 260. Aaron Humphrey is a heck of a football player. He's a guy that is leaving Texas as one of the finest that they've had on the defensive front. And he's a guy that, uh, I don't know if you saw the tape of Texas Tech where the, the Longhorns hammered them, but this guy was from Lubbock, is from Lubbock, and he had a spectacular game in that game, and he said he would play this game with as much emotion. He's played well. Here's a low snap to Leckler. He gets off a high wobbler, and Garcia calls for the fair catch at the 28-yard line. So a 39-yard punt. AM unable to move it down the field. Texas will have its first possession after this. Five. 12.35 to play in the third quarter. 16 to six, Texas. Longhorns with their first possession of the second half. Chris Sims is your quarterback and throws a strike to Cavill. And Cavill is across the 30 to the 31. Chris Sims started the game with poise, and he came out in the second half showing it as well. Hanging in the pocket well, made a completion on that play. Got banged hard, but came back. Here was really his only mistake. I think the interception that was thrown was not his mistake. That was a ball that went through Flowers' hands, and he had a terrific half. 8 of 16 with the one interception that doesn't count in my books for 116 yards. As productive as he was, he was tattooed several times. Here's the give to Hodges. Hodges Mitchell to the 37. Knocked down there by Cedric Curry. Hodges Mitchell having a great game today. As you look at Major Applewhite, who's suffering with a stomach virus today. Yeah, he is feeling very, very bad. Told me yesterday that in his career, everything has fallen into place. And this is one time that it hasn't fallen into place. But that's the way it goes, and Texas is fortunate that it has a terrific young talent in Chris Sims who will battle Major Applewhite, the probable, in my mind, Big 8, Big 12, Offensive Player of the Year for a starting job this spring. Third down, they need a long two. Crowd picks up as he calls an audible. Here's Mitchell. He's going to be close. I'm not sure he got it. Great penetration by the guys in Maroon. Yeah, you're exactly right. That's what they needed. In the first half, they didn't get enough of that. I think Bernard and Edwards and Clemens up front are doing a better job, at least in that series, of giving the linebackers a little room to make plays. This defense is set up for those linebackers to be the playmakers. Franzen got there first. Jamison finished him off. And a nice stop by Texas A&M. Boy, you talk about a strange trip for Texas as well. I mean, we, we mentioned that Rod Babers had a seizure on the bus coming over to the stadium yesterday. He went to the hospital. Last night, Major Applewhite gets sick. He can't play today. Here's Stockton, and his punt is a low punt. Return to the 27-yard line. Well, ABC Sports presentation of college football is brought to you by the new Impala by Chevrolet. Let's go for a drive by Bud Light with a great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down. Make it a Bud Light. Inspired technology with a human touch. Nokia, connecting people. And by Nicoderm CQ, the power to calm, the power to comfort, the power to help you quit. Partner, you're one of the few people around that calls it Nokia, and you're right. You know, we learned the, the good way, didn't we, down there at that bowl? <laughs> but uh, people call that Nokia. It's Nokia. 10.53 to play third quarter. Let's see if AM can get something going offensively. The count hit, and I mean driven back by Cedric Woodard. And again, I say Texas front four is the best group in the country. Well, Woodard is a bull as well. He lines up a defensive end. They moved him out and moved Rodgers in. So at end, watch him use his strength at about a 300-pounder. That's a great job of fending off the block there of Mahan and running down the defender. You know what's interesting, partner, is that Rodgers, the youngest guy on the front four, was playing so well, his improvement allowed Woodard to move to defensive end. 
Here's McCown again. Looks down. Oh, great defensive play in the secondary by Lee Jackson. Read the pass, closed quickly, and got his right hand on it to knock down a sure completion. Well, his hero is Steve Atwater. Remember the former Razorback? He made plays like this, and he does as well. Hodge will be the receiver. You either have to get it there quicker or come back to the football. You can't come back to that one. That ball has to be there quicker, but really a terrific defensive play as Jackson broke on it. Meanwhile, the story on the Maroon side is Brandon McCown. That was his eighth straight incomplete pass. Pressure comes. Now he throws incomplete nine in a row. Yeah, Randy is, I believe, now three for 13. He is really struggling, and Texas A&M is trying to find some rhythm, but the rhythm they are finding is not working. How much of his performance today is being drawn by the travails and the emotion of this past week? Because when we had that long talk with him yesterday, he was extremely emotional. Well, Tim, I think emotion is huge in ball games, but I think a lot of the times it boils down to sheer execution. And at this point of the game, the defense for Texas is executing much better than the offense for AM. Was this ball touched? Recovered by AM. We'll find out if it's touched. It was Texas AM football. Jason Webster with a recovery. And Mac Brown is livid. Did Garcia touch this one? Boy, I don't know. Boy, it would have had to hit the shoulder pad because it didn't touch his hand. It looked like the nose did hit the shoulder pad because the ball motion changed. Mac disagreed. The crowd did a great job of jumping on top of that and when the ball was rolling along the ground and the referee goes for it. That's a big, big play. Wow. We'll need another look at that one. Here's Toons. Look out. Toons inside the 20. Look, take another look at it, Dean, and see if the ball motion doesn't change when it hits his shoulder pad. I don't know. Doesn't seem to to me. The official is right on the spot. We're using slow motion replay, but the official's much closer, and he had a better view of it. It did not appear to me that it did change the direction of the ball. Jamar Toons got a first down. It's first down Aggies. Here he is again. Toons to the 15. DeAndre Lewis made the tackle, but the big guy is rolling. One more look at this, and keep in mind that the reaction of the crowd at this point is euphoric. And if Garcia had indeed not touched the ball, he should have been emphatic as well. The reaction by him indicates that he actually did touch the ball. Watch this. That looks like the ball changes to me. Here's the pitch back. Looking for help. Tunes to the 13. Jamar Toombs again, 265 pounds, all-conference pullback, team leader, tough runner, high school parade All-American. Well, this is just another great opportunity after a big turnover, and AM just has to capitalize on this. Their inability to drive, really to be successful making first downs or big plays has killed them today, but they really don't show the ability to have any chance of going 80 yards. So when you get a short field, you got to stick it in. Seven beats three, two. Third down and six. Keep in mind, McCowns missed his last nine passes. Stumbles, throws underneath. This is cold. He'll be close. Didn't make it. Ahmad Brooks made the tackle. He'll be a yard short. And the crowd, obviously, wants him to go for the first. Well, he's down ten. You'd be down seven if you don't. Tell you what, that was a terrific play by Ahmad Brooks at open field. It looked like Cole stopped and then was surprised at how open he was. Just a big gamble here. Fourth down and a long one. <laughs> he 
He'll be close. I think he got it. Yeah, I do too. And that is the the reason for that. If he did get it, is because he is a big back. Sometimes that 265 comes in handy, particularly when you have a big one blocking for you up there as well. I think Hardeman got it. He'll measure. Well, he's a spelt 242. He's short. Ooh. He is short. Texas stopped him. A gamble on the scoreboard, and it was a gamble with emotion as well because that was a, a play that would give A&M a lot of emotion and probable points or go the other direction. Let's see it again. Great effort by Hardeman, but also terrific defense. Didn't get the mark. And Tim, I thought that for once, A&M might elect to go outside to do something a little bit unusual because they've been jamming it inside all day. Well, the crowd once again comes to its feet. The ball is at the seven. And once again, it will be up to the wrecking crew to stop Mike Brown's Longhorns. Can the Aggies keep them backed up? Can the Horns get out of there? It's up to the freshman, Chris Sims. Pumps and looks deep. Throws into coverage and throws deep and incomplete. Good defense, like the play call, and it's a good job by Sims because he had nothing there. And what you do when you have nothing there is you throw it to no one. Well, he was looking in the direction of Montrell Flowers, who was the fastest of the Longhorns. Keep in mind, the last Texas punt was blocked. <laughs> On second and ten, Mitchell. Games three. Brian Gamble and Roland Bradley made the tackle. You know, Tim, the A&M defense came on strong at the end of the second uh, quarter, and they've started pretty well here. So they have settled into a nice game plan and are, and are not allowing Texas to do much. They've just got to have some help on the other side of the ball. They're also giving the offense a short field. Well, this is the situation in third and long. They love to run what they call 54 blood blue, where all four linebackers rush. Now they spread it. Texas needs seven across the middle. Oh, Incomplete. Yeah. Brandon Jennings knocked it loose. The beginning of the, the third quarter, the second half is starting the way the first half did. A lot of emotion with Texas A&M. Again, can they take advantage of that? That is much better defense, though. And Brandon Jennings, who has played well for, at free safety for these guys all season long, once again is in the right place at the right time. Texas A&M blocked one in the first half. Ryan Long standing four yards deep in the end zone. Low spiraling punt. Taken by Taylor, who is just caught by a foot. But they'll be in Texas territory after a 38-yard punt. A&M misses an opportunity for a big play here. Texas gets a low kickoff. You would think that Taylor would have a chance for a return. Watch 26. Great job. Probably have 15, 20 more yards if Dillon is not there. And he's Number. a guy, Tim, who has had, what, four blocks this season? At four blocks, he's the special team star. He's had 18 tackles on punts like that. And he is the winner of the special teams Frank Denius Award. He's a former walk-on. He's a senior. And he made a big play there. Well, well that, for the... Third time, actually the fourth time, that Texas A&M has started in yep. Texas territory. And the previous three, they've come away with no points. We'll see what they do here. Second down, Aggies. McCown goes the timing pattern to Johnson, and Johnson makes a catch inside the 20. 
Michael Johnson, blazing speed, soft hands, and amazing feet, a pickup of 30. Sooner or later, Texas A&M felt it could get something out on the corner, locked in man coverage. Bethel Johnson is a, a guy has, they have great hopes for here, and this ball is perfectly thrown as he is a step behind his man, and he takes advantage of it. But this guy has a chance to be an outstanding receiver before he's done because he did that against the number one corner in Brooks for Texas. Almost 19 yards a snag for Bethel Johnson. First down, Aggies. Three-step drop again. They go to the corner looking for their tight end incomplete. Second down and 10 for R.C. Slocum. You know, you've seen more of those those go routes, those those routes where you just say basically, and, and Texas looks at him and says, A&M's theory is you just get a guy and run him on a 40-yard dash and throw it down. There. You see it more now in college football than ever before because of the schemes. Texas jumps. Everybody jumps. We'll see who went right. first. That's great. That was a great job by McCallum because I know he told you a couple of days ago that they were really working on their changing their cadence just for that very reason to try to get Texas off. You look to the left hand of your screen. That's where I was looking. It looked like Texas jumped first. And it looked like Humphrey. No, I think you're right. I think it's against Texas. It is. Now, the interesting thing that McCown did on this is that he didn't take a knee. I like what he does here. He knows it's his advantage, so he goes. He's got his center up in front. He says, Seth McKinney, go block someone. And sometimes you can make a big play off of that. In this case, he doesn't make the five yards that they get with the penalty. So we cut the distance in half. It's second down. The Aggies need five. And Toons inside the ten. Texas A&M trailing by 10, 5-15 remaining in the third period. Largest crowd in the history of Texas football on any level. Third down conversions, a problem for A&M in this game. Third down and a long two. Here's Toons. Breaks a tackle inside the five. Jamal Toons, touchdown Aggies. And Texas A&M behind Toons' nine-yard run climbs back into this ball game. Terrific job. Watch the right of your screen. It's Andy Vinson. He gets Humphrey not turned, but he has him long enough so that Toombs can get to the outside. It's gone. Kitchens with the extra point, and it's good. So he splits the sticks. They add one more. It's a three-point game with 4.47 to play in the third. Jamar Toombs' nine-yard touchdown run has excited the 86,128 here at Kyle Field. And the Aggies now trail by only three. 4.47 to play in the third. And Texas A&M prepares to give it back to the Longhorns. Finally took advantage of that short field. Crowd is right in the middle of this thing. And they got him a deep route. That didn't hurt. Leckler kick off. Ike and Mitchell are deep, and this one will go out of bounds. And again, the kicking game hurts the Aggies. That's like a, a hook uh, hitting a three iron. Dead, dead hook. Hey, partner, coming up next on ABC's College Football Doubleheader, Eric Krauts in number three, Nebraska. They need a win. You know that to clinch a spot in the Big 12 championship game and keep that national championship alive. At least there are hopes. They take on Colorado. Who do you like? Well, I like Nebraska. They're tough. They are tough. Gary Barnett's done a good job, and Colorado's playing much better, but uh, Nebraska Crouch is playing terrifically, and that defense is awesome. Well, Nebraska knows what's on the line. So do the Hokies of Virginia Tech. That's coming up next on ABC Sports, the home of the Bowl Championship Series. First down, Texas. 
Rodgers. Mitchell with a game of three. Right now, let's go down to Chip Tarkington. Well, Tim, we mentioned this earlier that the start of the second half, the crowd begin to get into the football game. The white hankies are beginning to come out. The crowd is getting louder. And on the sidelines, Texas A&M, no one is sitting on the They're up close watching the game, and everybody is into the football game now. The crowd is making a big difference at this point. Hey, Chip, they say this place holds 85,000. This is supposed to be the largest crowd in Texas football history. It is. 86, 128 they squeezed in here. Where is everybody? Hey, they're everywhere. I can't hardly move on the sidelines. Second down for Sims with pressure. Throws a strike. And the Longhorns move the chains. Jamel Thompson. That's a big completion because you know what? The first half is over with. Phil, or Chris Sims. I've called him Phil Sims All twice. Days. Okay. Hey, I, no, twice. I understand <laughs> Phil's here today. Well, you, Speaking, incognito somewhere among the 86 plus. Well, maybe I keep seeing him. But. Uh, Speaking of Phil, he's handled it real well. He's not been a, a, a parent that's been imposing himself in the situation. But anyway, his son, the first half's done. He's got to come do it again. He's been extremely impressive. Yes, he has. And, and so was his father, Phil. <laughs> Chris, the number one recruit in the nation last year. True freshman. Just a youngster. Play action. Great fake. Pressure. And he goes down. They just keep swarming this time. It's Franzen. Offense is played with the mind in terms of execution. Defense is played with the heart. Watch Franzen come at him and Edwards 96. All over the young guy and Sims has to eat it. They say half the plan defense is wanting to and he wanted to get to Sims. A&M's defense has stopped Texas on its last five drives. Second down and long. The pressure comes, almost picked off. Oh, what a dangerous pass. Jason Webster got a hand on it first. That's the first major mistake I've seen from Sims, and Texas A&M missed an opportunity there to pick that one off. And the momentum is starting to swing. It has swung. Sims gets pressure from the right. You've got to expect it on this type of play. The line going out to help in the, in the short screen, the under screen. Deafening in here. Third and 15. Sims sacked again. from playing high school to college is not as much the size but the speed of the game. Watch Sims. I think he feels the pressure and thinks that in high school you can dart through that hole. No problem. In college, they're not only bigger and meaner, but they're faster than you. The wrecking crew gets its sixth sack of the afternoon. And half the punt. Plenty of time for Ryan Long. Gets off a very good low kick. Johnson takes it and fumbles it. And AM gets it back. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, the Aggies are fortunate here. The punting game has been adventurous. Jason Webster is wondering right there. When that, for about a half second, his heart is up in his throat, isn't it? A 48 yard punt, a 10 yard return. And a lifetime oh. waiting for that ball to end in an Aggie hand. Hey, near the conclusion of today's game, we'll select the Chevrolet player of the game from each team. Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. And beginning this year, Chevrolet also donates two $1,000 high school scholarships. Big hole, tunes. This isn't the same team that finished the first half not being able to do anything on offense. They're opening up holes. The execution is wonderful and they're doing this without really a tight end game. And they lost Michael De La Torre to 
back in midseason, and Broughton and Kazurski are nice players, but they aren't, that's not a strong position for them. Second down and short. Here's Toombs again. He's got the first down. Keep in mind that during the 90s, Texas A&M has lost only four games here at Kyle Field the entire decade. 54-4-1 is their record. It is a major challenge for Texas right now, and number 11 looks like he's ready to re-enter. Now, the word we got on this was that before the game that he was throwing up, they were pumping Major Applewhite full of fluids because of the stomach virus. He had a slight temperature. So they go with Sims. Sims does well. Texas A&M comes back. But they did tell us that they thought Major Applewhite might be able to play on a limited basis. In an emergency. It is an emergency. I think it has gotten to that point. First down A&M. Tunes again. Nothing. Great penetration by DeAndre Lewis. Reminder coming up tomorrow. We'll go to golf. Spain's El Nino. Sergio Garcia. Boy, what an exciting young player. He yeah. competes in his first Skins game. He joins Marco Mira, Freddie Couples, and David Duvall in one of America's favorite Thanksgiving traditions, the Skins game, a feast on the green for the green, 4.30 Eastern, 1.30 Pacific on ABC Sports. That should be fun. Looks like he's coming. Second down and 11. Toons breaks one. Gets back across the original line of scrimmage and picks up two more. That is outstanding running right there. Watch Toombs break through the first line of defenders. Texas realizing that it needs to get into the backfield to slow the big train down, but he runs through those tackles. It takes, he gets about six extra yards. But as impressive as that is, they're still unable to pass. Yeah. Yeah, they've not They're shown. really handcuffed. What Texas A&M has done in the passing game is they've basically gotten to where their passing game is, hey, you go long. we got one-on-one, -on -one, and we'll throw it up and try to get it. Well, that's the end of the third period. Texas 16, A&M 13, ABC Sports presentation of college football. We'll return after this message and a word from our ABC stations. At Kyle Field in College Station, Texas, in this whole stadium, is rocking. Get seasick standing in here. Right now, the momentum belongs to the Aggies, but they're faced with third down and nine, and the count hasn't been sharp. He is here. He's got the completion. Move the chains. Randy McCown has not been as sharp as he would like for much of the game, but this is as good as it gets. He's throwing left, he's throwing off his back foot, he's under pressure, and he delivers a strike. He Hodge said, with yeah. the catch in the first down. A gain of 24. And now it's the Texas defense that has to bow its back. Toons. Inside the 40 to the 37, Sean Rogers, and what a talent he is. Rodgers made the tackle. He's 6'4", 315. Six sacks, 22 tackles for losses, 23 quarterback hurries, and that stop there on the big guy, Toombs. Second down and five. Got him again. Again, we'll see who flinched first. Flags fly everywhere, and again... McCown runs it and tries to get a big play out of it. That's a result of a lot of game study, a lot of tape study these kids put in. McCown knew that. Crackthorpe, the coordinator, knew that. They had chances to, to get offsides calls. And five yards against the Texas defense is sometimes pretty hard to get. Tim, we're going to look at it again. Instead of going to the knee, watch him. He'll try to pick up some extra yardage. Now, Texas is alert. Hampton and company don't let them pick up the yardage. Occasionally, you'll have a defense lapse off, though. They will they will know that they are the guilty party. And Steve Cragthorpe has instructed his quarterback to try to take advantage of it. He'll pick up five any way he can. It was Hampton that jumped, and as good as he is, he's their leading tackler, tried to anticipate the count, and got caught. Hardiman. 
yard, and he's got a first down. Again, it's Hampton that made the tackle. Hey, partner, take a look at the Applebee's game fact. Other than the Texas and Texas A&M rivalry, the most played rivalries are... Did you have it? Minnesota-Wisconsin? I didn't know the top one. I knew the Missouri-Kansas one was. I thought Minnesota, the only guy that knew that was our producer, Bruce Clark. <laughs> yeah, you know, that scene up in Wisconsin was fabulous a couple of weeks ago when Dane set the mark. Madison was rocking the way it is here in College Station today. First down, Aggies. Nowhere to run for Toombs. And he's run out of bounds at the 25. Even where there's not a hole, he seems to find yardage, a pickup of three. Was that third quarter as fast to you as it was to me? This game has been as fast as I've seen all year. But this game is unlike any other, certainly unlike any that's preceded in this rivalry with the tragedy that occurred eight days ago and all the emotion that came into this ball game with everybody here at Kyle Field. So Toombs is over 100 yards. And it's second down and long for the Aggies. The ball's loose. Texas has got it. Lee Jackson saw it. Nobody else did. He makes the recovery, and Texas gets the ball back. Errors will just drive you crazy. Unforced errors will do more than that to you. They'll, they'll get you beat. This is a... It's hard to tell. I always blame it on the center because I was the guy taking snaps. But Seth McKinney snapped it. Ah, uh, but what a tragedy. McCown has struggled all day. Aggies were down at least in field goal range to tie the game, and they turn it over, and look who just made an appearance. Major Applewhite. He set a UT freshman record for passing yards, total yards, touchdown. He's improved in all those as a sophomore, and he comes out and throws a strike to Flowers. Let's go downstairs. Here's Chip. Hey, let me tell you something, guys. Major Applewhite was warming up over here, throwing the football, taking snaps, and you could just see it in his eyes. This young man was going to come back and take over this football team. He knew that they needed him right now. You saw the first pass as a strike. I tell you what, he sees it. He's got the eye of the tiger right now. Over 3,000 passing yards. He's breaking all the Texas records. Second down and four. Aggies coming on the blitz. Texas beats him and picks up two. What Major does, though, is that it opens up the running game. He and Kwame Cavill get it going. It's sort of like Aikman and Emmett Smith and Michael Irvin were back in their heyday. Scouting reports could go on for the strengths. Extremely accurate. That's the most important thing for a quarterback, and he's involved into a tough leader. He's not the fastest guy, but I think that second one right now is what Matt Brown wants to play off of. He is the leader of this Texas team unequivocally. With him at the helm, this is a quick strike attack. But right now, behind that great big offensive line, they would be best to melt the clock. Get a long drive. Audible. After right, broken play, looks for help, and throws it away. Let's let's keep in mind, I think too many times we sit at home and think that sick players can just come out and play and it's no big deal. They're easy, you know, come from behind stories. That's not the case. This guy feels terrible. But that was a mental lapse. Could be because but of the he, illness, delay yeah. of game. He took too much time. So they move him back. And it'll bring up third down and long. It's a matter of Major Applewhite as he's struggling to get the play call in here right now. Typically, they like to get him out of the huddle at 17 seconds on the play clock, and actually, that's about where they are right now. Third down, they need seven. His stamina, though, is where I was going. That's a key issue. The Aggies show blitz. They come with it. He throws another strike, and the ball is dropped by Thompson. Oh, my. That ball was perfect and hit Thompson between the one and the two. That was a terrific job by 10 players on Texas's offense. The offensive line, the backs, great blitz pickup, and the three-quarter delivery from Major Applewhite was all he could get in there without it being batted down, but Jamel Thompson showing his tendencies to either be good or bad. That play will say was not good. 
Longhorns don't move the chains, and so they come on to punt. Ryan Long with another spiraling punt that takes Taylor back to the 33. And again, Texas A&M will have good field position at the 45. 42-yard punt, 12-yard return. With 11.36 to play, Texas and Texas A&M. And the Aggies have good field position, but Toons is closed down in a hurry. Hey, reminder, coming up tomorrow night in the primetime college football matchup, don't miss Rose Bowl bound number 25, Stanford. If you have not seen wide receiver Troy Walters, you're in for a treat. They take on Notre Dame, the Fighting Irish. That's tomorrow night, 8 o'clock Eastern, 5 Pacific on ABC Sports, home of the Bowl Championship Series. Who do you like? That little guy can play. You know, I kind of like... I kind of like Stanford. They've got a lot more to play for at this point. Second down, they need 10. McCown, incomplete. Boy, he has struggled today. He had Taylor out there open and just didn't hit him. Well, he did, Tim, but I'm, I'm going to say that he had number 23, Lee Jackson, on a safety blitz. Watch the guy in the white jersey come dart into the screen right there. He is in the, the, the lane between McCown and the receiver. And that was a terrific blitz job by Lee Jackson, who was shot out of a cannon. Well, I know a quarterback wants to defend a quarterback, but the bottom line is he's 6 of 19. <laughs> no, I get you. I'm just saying on that play, it's not as easy as it looks. 19 passes. That was three games for you at Oklahoma. <laughs> That's a career. Here's the count again. This time he throws incomplete again for Taylor. Taylor wanted a flag. There is none. Hill on the coverage, and it was solid. Irvis Hill locked in man on the corner. Number one wins this battle. As that's a pretty, pretty well thrown football. AM has gotten the matchups that it's wanted. They just haven't been able to take advantage of them very often. This is when your punter really comes in handy. He's 55 yards away from the goal line, and I guarantee you he'll pop it inside the 20. Well, in the six punts today, he's averaged just over 42 yards. That's it's under gone. his average, but he gets a hold of this one. This is a high tail wagger that hits inside the 10 and is downed at the three. Great kick, great job of coverage. Number 39, he plays like a goalie. That's what you do. You get down there by the end line and play like a goalie. Keep the ball out. Stands in the brand new end zone. They call it the zone. They paid like 37 million for it. And this is why. It's the loud end of the stadium, and that's what Major Appleby is up against. First down. And Applewhite hands off. And there's a flag down. Major Applewhite has to be just trying to keep a clear head and a calm stomach right now. <laughs> Especially the latter there. This is when the crowd becomes such a factor that's half the distance to the goal on Texas. And clearly, if this game is played in Austin or in Dallas, that doesn't happen. But it backed up in the end zone, as you so aptly described, that is a very hostile and difficult place to play and to communicate. Well, R.C. Slocum said Major Applewhite if he looked different, was a little bit bigger, everybody in the country would be saying he's the best quarterback there is in the land. Says he looks young and he looks small, but he can get it done. We'll see here. Hodges Mitchell gets some good yardage where they can breathe out to the eight. That's always a dangerous play to, to fans, and I think it is to a quarterback when you go deep in the backfield. Sure, you're supposed to block up front and that's a better chance for you to bust a big play than a quarterback sneak getting it out of your end zone. But the point is, you are in the end zone. If a lineman busts on a blitz, you're going to give up possibly a safety or a fumble and lead to a touchdown. This is a team that doesn't panic, though. They've come from behind and through the last five games. Here they've got the lead. They're just backed up. Second down and short. Mitchell again to the 10. He's met there by Lonnie Madison. Yeah, you're talking about Applewhite. You know, he's gone from Opie to Iceman. Iceman is what his very good friend, Kwame Cavill, calls him because he says he is never iced. He can play in any situation. But we'll find out. That he's been in some tough ones and produced, and he's in another one right now. Really impressed with him yesterday. He 
We're visiting with him down on the field. And boy, is he in control of things. Here he is, Major Applewhite. Third down and two. Hodges Mitchell breaks the tackle. He's not going to get there. The wrecking crew closes in and makes the tackle. That's a great job for obvious reasons, including now the punt is forced from the end zone. And let's look back at earlier in the game when Texas, in a better situation with this, gave up a block. And now the pressure will be coming full force. But you know what? I think I'd set up the return here, partner. I'll tell you why. Because you'll be standing here inside the 50 in Texas territory, and all you need is a field goal to tie. You just want this good field position. They're coming. Right. Here they come. Here's Taylor. That again is taken down Same by guy. Dylan, who is just a spectacular special teams player. 37-yard punt, no return. It seems that the first rule of business today is to be an e-business. The second rule is to work with a company who pioneered the direct way of using the Internet as a business tool. Dell built their business around this direct model, which made them a forerunner in e-business. They provided the equipment we needed to use the Internet to establish one-to-one -one relationships with our customers. With Dell's help, we're breaking down the walls between our ideas and reality. Be direct. Dell. Dell workstations use Intel Pentium 3 processors. brother or a big sister and share special moments like this. Join Valvoline and Big Brothers Big Sisters of America. For more information, call 1-800-TEAM-VAL. Chrysler Concord, four-wheel independent suspension and a powerful V6. I didn't know Davis could move like that. I told him to think of himself as something powerful and agile. I wonder what he was thinking. Now get a thousand dollars cash allowance on the Chrysler Concord. Sergio Garcia gives an American tradition some Spanish flair. He joins Duval Couples in O'Meara for the Skins game Saturday at 4:30 on ABC. Final eight minutes and 29 seconds from Kyle Field, and Texas A&M is in Longhorn territory. First down, Aggies. Odds in motion. They give to Toons. Well, coming up Sunday on ESPN and NFC West battle, Steve Berline and the Panthers take on the Falcons. So it's Atlanta at Carolina. Then on Monday Night Football here on ABC, Brett Favre and the Packers. Boy, they are trying to stay in the playoff picture as they face the 49ers. Green Bay at San Francisco, the 30th anniversary season of Monday Night Football continues live Monday, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific, right here on ABC Sports. Tunes again. Cover. Battles his way down to the 41. Aaron Humphrey with another tackle. A&M doing a good job, though, a, a better job in the second half of getting hat on hat. Texas has nine men on the line of scrimmage. They have two safeties back that are supporting in the run game as well. But the only way you can compete with nine men on the line of scrimmage is to make sure your guys get a hat on a hat. Well, the Longhorns under Mac Brown have adopted an aggressive upfield pressure defense. They need that here. Third down and three. They make the stop. Toombs does not get to the yardage needed. All right, this is fourth and short. Lewis and Rawls come up, make the stop, partner. He's going to be what? Well, About a foot short? You know, th th these, these gambles get bigger. We'll watch the blocking up front. And if he could have only made another yard, we would, they wouldn't be in this predicament. But R.C. Slocum wants to think about it. You know, I don't think he got a very favorable mark. It'll be fourth down and less than a yard when we come back. 
You'll win. Texas A&M trails by three. They need a yard and a half for a first down. It is fourth down Aggies, and they're going for it. You've got to be a 57-yard field goal attempt. Here's Tones. He'll be close. He's it got it, like He's got it. But not by much. Blocked by McKinney and Valletta and Mayhem. And it's a great job up front because Texas attacking defense is coming down hard, and Seth McKinney and Valletta get a good job, do a good job of getting their men and creating enough of a seam where he can get through and get the yardage. That was a strict power play, and also our man Haimuli, who has had a fabulous. They What's pulled, started? pulled Haimuli and got him in front of the big guys. Yeah. There's a look at Toons. First down, Aggies. Here he is again. Picks up a yard. That's it. Isn't it only fitting that after this tumultuous week that this game is a three-point game, the home team has the football, driving in with six minutes to go and a chance to win it. It doesn't get any better. It's a dream setup for the Aggies. Keep in mind, Texas A&M's place kicker, Terrence Kitchens, has already hit a 62-yarder this year. Aggies trail by three. Second down and nine. Oh, oh, the got it. It's complete to Cole. Chris Cole with the catch. They'll mark it at the 13. It's a gain of 24 yards. A lot of people say, well, why do you always throw that fade route? You don't ever complete it. Well, they've completed it twice today. The first time it led to a touchdown. And this time, Cole grabs it in one more time. Formerly the go-to guy, and he was the go-to guy on this play. Well, another reason is Cole is almost 6'1". Brooks is 5'8", and Hill is 5'9", the two cover corners. But Tim, that's a great point. The Texas coaches were very concerned about the size mismatch. They felt their corners were going to be in a jam playing against the, the size of receivers, the 6'2", 6'1", 6'2", receivers of Texas A&M. Certainly well within the range of Kitchens, and Texas knows it. But yeah, they, they don't also, want three. Yeah. But they also know that A&M has been down here several times and turned it over. They don't want three. They don't want Major Applewhite to have a chance to come back and win this one. They want him to have to work for it. Second down and 11. McCown to the corner. Touchdown, Texas A&M. Matt Bumgardner. McCown throws a strike to Bumgardner, and it's a touchdown, Aggies. One, two, three, throw. Throws it on time. Perfectly thrown ball. Almost a little push off there, but you can't call that. Good no call, and Bump Bumgardner is in perfect position, and his height helped him once again as we just talked about the height advantage. Shane Leckler splits the sticks, and the Aggies have taken the lead with 5.02 left in the ball game. He had a 5'8 cornerback hooked up with a 6'1 wide receiver. And the 6'1 wide receiver wins the battle. Bumgardner had that separated shoulder earlier in the year. He's been hurt his whole career, and it's only appropriate that this is the guy that makes the big play. He has sparked this team all year, showing gutty determination and coming back. And McCown, who has struggled throughout, takes the lead and rejoices. Bob Gardner's first catch, and it was a big one. You know, McCown doesn't have time to celebrate. He has to assume, along with the rest of the offensive staff and players, that they're going to fall behind and they have to take it down to win the football game. I guarantee you that's what Texas has been doing on its side. 
Well, Texas has come from behind in three of the last five games. The Horns trailed Oklahoma 17-0, trailed Nebraska 13-3, and Iowa 20-10. I just mentioned we'll bring it out. Look out. And he's out to the 27. Well, ABC Sports presentation of college football is brought to you by Jeep Grand Cherokee with legendary off-road capability. By Valvoline. You can always tell the guys who use Valvoline by State Farm Insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And by Dell Computer. Pioneering direct internet ideas for your business. Be direct. Dell. What a great setup here. We have an Aggie defense playing the way Aggie defense of, of old played. Only one first down they've given up to Texas in the second half. Yet Major Applewhite on the cusp of becoming the all-time single-season passing leader in the Big 12 Conference and needing to take his team down to score and win. Well, I've got all the faith in the world in Major Applewhite when he's healthy. Here's the three-step drop, waits, looks, and throws. That ball is going to be overthrown. And keep in mind, Major Applewhite is definitely not healthy. Suffered with a stomach virus last night and this morning. He did not start the ball game. The freshman Chris Sims went most of the way. Major Applewhite was having a tough time keeping anything down throughout the first half. Made a messy sideline. But they said he could play in an emergency, and yeah. this certainly is one. And this guy, number eight, I wonder if that hard hit he suffered out of bounds had anything to do with him coming out, or if they just felt he was rattled otherwise, and that it was a time to bring in Major Applewhite. Keep in mind, Chris Sims was 10 of 21 for 130 yards. Here's second down and 10. Applewhite. Underneath, almost picked off. Wow, Michael Jamison broke on the ball and almost had the interception. Mike Hankwitz, the coordinator at AM, yeah. made great adjustments at halftime. His team is playing unbelievably with emotion, but they're in the right places. That's great defense, and it, basically Kwame Cavill is double covered. They knew that Kwame Cavill had too big a first half, so they doubled him. They've had to man up on the other guys, and they've done a great job there. Third and ten. With time. Flags fly, and he's got a completion. It's caught by Brandon Healy. It'll be a first down if the flag is not against Texas. That'll probably be a hold against Texas is my bet and negate a fabulous play by Major Applewhite. Holy cow. There is the hole. Well, they didn't waste time throwing the flag, partner. It came in immediately. Mike Williams, big number 63, all 340 pounds of him, guilty of that hold, and that's one of the bigger penalties that the Longhorns have suffered in a long time. That'll just make this crowd louder. So I wouldn't be surprised if Hankwitz decides here, the coordinator, just to rush with your four. Don't bring a bunch of pressure because that exposes you in the secondary. Third and 20. They only bring three at him. Plenty of time. Throws across the middle. It's complete. Short of the first down to Cavill. Exactly what I thought they would do and a terrific job of execution for the Aggies. They gave up just enough and not too much. Brandon Jennings is playing center field, not in your picture. Middle receiver, crossing route, open against the zone. Brandon Jennings has to make the tackle, and he does it. So Steady player, and he came through once again. Cavill with his ninth catch of the day. Spectacular afternoon. But he doesn't have enough for the first, and so Ryan Long will punt it deep. This one hits at the 40 and gets a Texas roll inside the 30. Down to the 26-yard line. A 39-yard punt. 
And with three minutes and 35 seconds left, Texas A&M will have the ball. Well, A&M would like to do nothing more than turn around and hand it to the big guys back there and burn some clock and make some first downs. Time permitting, we'll get you to the thrifty post-game report with John and Terry. Right now, 335 left in this ballgame. 2016 A&M. Tunes across the 30. They'll try to bang it, bang it out and melt the clock. The improvement for Texas A&M has been across the board here in the second half. As is often the case, the offensive line has been left out of some of the complimenting, but they've done a terrific job. For them to mash out five yards when Texas knows that they're planning to run it right down their throat is impressive. Second down, tunes again. to the 31 yard line. It'll bring up third down and long. Texas sitting on its timeouts right now and they're running a combination of blitzes or they have all afternoon and they've run some, some run blitzes that really haven't been as effective as you would have thought here in the second half. But I'll say this, Mac Brown is as good as he gets oh, absolutely. about knowing and understanding the clock and your timeouts. Well, I thought you were gonna stop there after the first part of that sentence. He's as good as it gets. He, he, he is, is that good and he is with clock management as well. Down and five for the Aggies. And again, it's Toons. Toons will be short of the first by about a yard and a half. They take the conservative route. I don't know but what I would have done the same thing, but that is the conservative route. You're probably not going to pick up a third and five on the ground. Your percentages are not very good, but what you do is you either force Texas to use a timeout or you run the clock. Whereas if you throw it, they've thrown to a low percentage of completions, and if you throw it incomplete, the clock stops. Well, pretty much dictated by McCown, who's just eight of exactly. 22. No, right? We'll be back to the conclusion after this. 11. Punt is his best of the day. Boy, he booms this one. It'll stop at the 11-yard line, and once again, Texas will be backed up. A 54-yard punt by Shane Leckler. Let's take you back to New York and John Saunders. Well, Tim, we want to remind everyone that coming up next, it's Nebraska and Colorado. Frank Solich has his eyes on the national championship game in the Nokia Sugar Bowl. Gary Barnett would like to stop him from getting there. And it's been close the last three times these two teams have met. It is coming up at the bottom of the hour. Right now, Tim, back to you. All right, John, thanks so much. And Gary Barnett has done a marvelous job with that ball club, but Nebraska so strong. That's coming up next. Right here, we have 152 left in the ball game. Texas A&M 20, Texas 16, and the Longhorns are backed up. Look the flowers. Applewhite looks deep, throws deep into coverage incomplete. And he throws to Flowers. They like to do that in their four wide set. They'll have Flowers on the near side or on the side by himself and they feel that they can get a lot of single coverage and he is the speed merchant. I mean, he can really fly. But AM right now playing with a Man safety free. And safety and back. safety over right. to help the corner on that deep coverage. That's right. And, and Major Applewhite is going to have to be patient at times and look off that safety. But you're exactly right. They basically have one and a half men instead of man coverage. Right now. Worst thing A&M can do now is give up a big play. Keep everything in front of them. And the secondary is playing so. Second down and 10. Applewhite throws underneath, has the completion to the 22-yard line. Hodges Mitchell very wisely runs out of bounds. He's got the first. We thought coming in this would be a rivalry game like this, that it would come down to the end, and that Texas would, because of the superior punting of Leckler, be forced to make drives of 70 and 80 yards. And here on this ultimate drive, because of Leckler, they're having to make one of some 90 yards. 
A record just set by Major Applewhite today, the Big 12 single season record. That was Cole Detmer, of course, for Colorado. More important things for Applewhite right now. He wants to move the football, and that's thrown incomplete to Flowers. Flowers has had an off day. That was great coverage there, but Flowers has not played well, and Major Applewhite, you can tell, is not 100%. But you're right, Texas A&M defensively now has to go contrary to what their nature is in terms of wanting to blitz. They've got to play smart, prevent big plays, keep them in front of them. Aggies playing on emotion. Dedicated this game to the victims that were killed and injured in the bonfire accident. Apple White on the draw. Mitchell's got a hole. He's got room out across the 30. And is hit hard at the 37, but it's another Texas first down. Terrific play call. Terrific play call. No one expecting anything on the ground. And watch it open up for Hodges Mitchell. And he knows what to do with it. When this guy sees a crack, he goes. He could be the best run catch combo the team has ever had. And, and he's Texas only has ever had. You know, he has not fumbled now for some 240 consecutive plays. He's over 100 yards rushing today. First down, Texas. Blitz is coming. And there's your experience of Major Applewhite who throws it away. Very good point. Very good point. Last thing you want if you're Texas is a sack. Everybody mixing it up. A&M comes with the pressure. There's a busted assignment in the protection. And so they win that battle. The battle before was won by the offensive coordinator with the, the run call. It's a little chess game with a lot on the line. Second down and 10. Another catch by Cavill to the 40. It's a gain of five. And Cavill has 10 catches today and 95 for the year. Well, that's a play that plus for A&M because the clock continues to run as Major Applewhite looking at the defense. Right now what he's doing is calling the protection to the offensive line based on what he sees defensively. 43 seconds left in the game. Applewhite throws a strike to the 46. Brandon Healy with the catch and the clock will stop with 37 seconds left. Greg Davis, the coordinator, gives Applewhite a lot of leeway here. He'll give him a package of six plays, three runs, three passes, and Major calls what he wants based on what he sees. Texas has to get a touchdown. A field goal won't do it. They trail by four. 30 seconds left. Applewhite is sacked. Ball's loose. Brooks forced the fumble. And they're still wrestling at the bottom of the pile. AM thinks they have it. This is the game. It is over. Aggies have got it. comes on a corner blitz right there. No one picks him up. He slaps the ball. Major Applewhite tries to get on it, but this day is meant for the Aggies. The stadium has the buzz to it that you rarely experience. Amazing feeling in this stadium right now. As I look around the stands in front of us, there are tears, there are jubilation. Unbelievable. And on the other side. Twenty-three seconds left. This game 
a culmination of two of the toughest, well, eight days anyway. Not two weeks, but eight days, which has been a kaleidoscope of emotions, not only for those here in College Station, but throughout the state of Texas, throughout the country. The Aggies dedicated this game to the 12 victims, the 27 injured, and they will come away with a win over their rival, the Texas Longhorns. I think that every player and every coach and every fan now realizes more than ever before that there are more important things than football games. But this afternoon, the football game was important for the right reasons. Texas takes a timeout, but there is a buzz in this stadium. This game today has been like a healing salve or a bomb because it's forcing the players and the fans to move on. And you're right, the game certainly does pale in comparison with the tragic events of the hour, but it's it's actually forced them to grow up and move on and take care of business, and they did that today. And for at least these 60 minutes, their minds were off those tragic events. And Tim, don't you agree? We had a shot there of Mac Brown that, that here's a guy on the other side of the, the field, the, 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 the hated villain in the eyes of Texans in terms of football here at AM, but he has handled it as gracefully and appropriately as anyone could ever handle a situation like this. Oh, the entire University of Texas and the University of Texas family has. Mac Brown has won 38 of his last 46 games, nine straight winning seasons, seven straight bowl bids. He gets it done, and he gets it done with class. But you're right, this day belongs to the Aggies. 14 seconds left. We'll be back for the conclusion right after this. Afraid Tim, I don't know if R.C. Slocum said much at halftime or if it needed to be said, but whatever happened at halftime was one of the more memorable things that those kids would have ever gone through because the performance of Texas A&M here in the second half has been nothing short of phenomenal, particularly on defense. They've given their team a chance to win, and a team has won that didn't look like it was capable of scoring and winning. This is a remarkable comeback by Texas A&M. Boy, when you think of all the hardships that this university has had over this past year, it's incredible. I mean, you had John Harvey, R.C. Slocum's son, who had open-heart surgery in Houston. You had the plane crash that was carrying the skydiving team from Texas A&M, diagnosed or die, the uh, Ray Doerr, the AM quarterback coach, was diagnosed with Luke Gehrig's disease. Then the 12 dead. I mean, it's just been an incredible year and an incredible upset here by Texas A&M today over the University of Texas. They've never had a sweeter victory than this. And Texas A&M 20, the Longhorns of Texas 16. Downstairs to Chip Tarkington. Congratulations. Can you, can you put it into words, this win? Well, it's been an emotional week here for everybody associated with the AM family. We've got strong people involved in this universe and our Aggie family, and they all pulled together today and we pulled this thing off. It's a great credit to the spirit of Aguilar. What in the world did you say at halftime? I felt like halftime that we should have been we should have been ahead of the ball game at halftime. I was really disappointed. I challenged the team that we weren't going to accept losing this ball game. We were coming out in the second half to do what we had to do to win it. Congratulations, great win. Back upstairs. Well, that motion with R.C. Slocum. You saw Randy McCown with the tears in his eyes. A game for the ages. It's Wisconsin where the fans stay for fifth quarter. I think they may institute that here in College Station today. These fans don't want to leave. The Chevrolet players of this game have to be Hodges Mitchell and Jamar Toombs of Texas A&M. 
In recognition of their efforts, Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. And beginning this year, Chevrolet also will donate $1,000 to the two high schools. Mitchell, 24 carries, 102 yards, and a touchdown. Toombs, 37 carries, 126 yards, and two touchdowns. Once again, the final score, Texas A&M 20 and Texas 16. Now stay tuned for the thrifty postgame with John Saunders and Terry Bowden. ABC Sports is online at ESPN.com, part of the Go Network. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports. Continue.